Sports. We are A gorgeous night for baseball here in Milwaukee. Welcome to Miller Park. It's the Phillies and the Brewers game two of their series. Milwaukee trying to get even if they can win tonight. Alfredo Figaro out on the hill set to make his second start as a Milwaukee Brewer has been stellar on the bullpen. He'll oppose Cliff Lee tonight. Hi everybody Craig and Davey back on board with you here on Fox Sports Wisconsin. And the big topic of conversation continues to be pitching, but kind of with a new twist with uh, Figaro going out of the bullpen again, making his second start. And then it's going to be Tom Gorzolani tomorrow, Davey. And the Brewers are still hoping within the next week or so, maybe 10 days, to get Chris Narvison back. So we could be up seeing some new faces and a new guard, if you well, will. Well, that's right. And, and you know, with, if Narvison comes back, whenever he does come back and he can pitch well, you know, that's going to really help out the bullpen. But at this point in time right now, it's been a tax on the bullpen because, and it's amazing that what the job that they've done over the last, you know, 30 ball games, lowering their ERA to 2.08. So, you know, with those two guys starting with Figueroa tonight and Gorzolani tomorrow, is going to tax to stretch out the bullpen a little bit. Well, they're hoping Figaro is stretched out and ready for a good start. He's got top competition tonight in Cliff Lee. So the big question tonight, how can the Brewers beat the former Cy Young Award winner? Couldn't quite get it done on Sunday. Another rematch coming up. B.A. and Rock set to talk about it. is presented by Menards, save big money and all your home improvement needs at Menards. By Miller Lite, it's not just a good time, it's Miller time. And by Toyota, let's go places. Phillies and the Brewers here tonight, Alfredo Figaro on the mound. He saw Philly in three innings of relief on Sunday. Cliff Lee was on the mound, he got the start Sunday and beat the Brewers. Big question is, how can the Brewers 
beat him tonight. Here's our game announcers now. The birthday boy, Brian Anderson <laughs> and Bill Schroeder, guys. All right, thanks a lot, Craig, and welcome from Miller Park. Now, that is the big question coming into tonight's play. How do you beat Cliff Lee? And the Brewers actually have had a lot of success, Rock, against Cliff Lee historically. Matter of fact, that win against Milwaukee last weekend was his first ever against the Brewers. But how do you defeat Cliff Lee? Well, I tell you, what you have to be is very aggressive in the strike zone. I mean, Cliff Lee, a lot of times your best pitch to hit is going to be your first strike. You saw what he did against Milwaukee on Sunday at Philadelphia. Seven and two-thirds. He gave up three runs. Two of those runs scored when he was out of the ball game. He throws strikes, no walks, 11 punch outs. And the thing that makes him so effective, you know, each and every start is the fact that he throws very quickly. He doesn't take a lot of time between pitches. Here you see a sequence on Sunday facing Alfredo Figaro, and he threw his pitches in between pitches only 12 seconds. And, I mean, that's lightning speed when you talk about getting the baseball, getting it back to the catcher, and when you do that, you know you're pitching with a lot of confidence. So the Brewers uh, have a plan, and hopefully that plan is going to work here tonight. It did not. He was very effective against Milwaukee last Sunday. But now it's their turn in their home ballpark. The Phillies and the Brewers, we've got the lineups and the first pitch coming your way next on Fox Sports Wisconsin. Phillies tonight and the Brewers ready to take the field. It is a beautiful night for Major League Baseball. 65 degrees. Clear skies up above and Alfredo Figaro leading the crew onto the field tonight. Brewers trying to even this series in one game apiece after losing yesterday. The Phillies are playing good baseball right now. They've won five in a row. They've scored at least five or more runs in each of the last five games as well. And Charlie Manuel has seen his team put their hitting shoes on which is the way he likes it. One of the great hitting coaches in the game the guru Charlie Manuel his lineup today looks like this. It's brought to you by Piggly Wiggly Michael Young back in the leadoff spot once again John Mayberry then Jimmy Rollins middle of the order is Ryan Howard Dominic Brown and Delman Young and Eric Kratz will do the catching Freddie Galvis at second Cliff Lee on the mound and batting ninth and Alfredo Figaro gets his second start for the Milwaukee Brewers today. Yeah, 18th appearance overall. Very good numbers. I mean, a 367 earned run average. The one problem that he has had gets behind an account. That big fastball has given up eight home runs, and you would figure he's got to keep the baseball down. These Phillies can hit him pretty well as you as we check out the Menards, the Brewers defense for today. Braun Gomez and Aoki, no changes in the outfield. 
Yoneski Betancourt gets the start at first base. It's been Juan Francisco for a couple of days. Weeks back at second. And Jonathan Lucroy behind home plate. So some changes on the right side of the infield with the left-hander Lee on the mound. The right-handed hitters part of that platoon with Weeks and Betancourt. Scooter Jeanette and Juan Francisco available off the bench here tonight. A couple of lefties. Home plate umpire is John Tumpain, Mark Carlson, Brian Knight, Dan Iasonia on the bases. Iasonia is the crew chief. He's over at third. And we are set for baseball. Just couldn't ask for better weather today. Roof is wide open. Got a big crowd filing in here on a Friday night. And we'll see if the Brewers can get this series evened up. First pitch of the ball game from Figaro is on the way. It's upstairs and off we go. Michael Young leading off once again. Yesterday was the first time he hit in the leadoff spot since 2004 when he was a member of the Rangers. Did that regularly when he first came up with Texas. 2000, 01, 02, 03, 04, but hadn't done it much lately. And uh, Charlie Manuel feeling like he needed some batting average and on base percentage in that top spot. Making that move. Ben Revere is out. And the Phillies are still awaiting Chase Utley to return from the disabled list. Yeah, Young uh, on base four, three times yesterday with three hits. Shoots that one over to Betancourt. And a good start for Figaro as a three unassisted gets his evening underway. That fastball in the mid 90s. He's got the slider and the curveball to go with it. He'll throw a change up and. Very important for the secondary pitches for Figaro tonight. Ron Rennick would love to see six innings out of him. Now the Brewers, as we talked about in our Brewers Live pregame show, they are in a precarious position with their starting pitchers right now. We got Marco Estrada on the disabled list, Hiram Burgos on the disabled list. They've had a poor starts lately, giving up a lot of runs, and now. You're basically in a bullpen by committee the next two days, and that's asking a lot out of a bullpen. So, putting a lot of stock in Figaro and Gorzolani over the next two days to try to give them some extended innings. Yeah, neither one of them very stretched out, particularly Gorzolani tomorrow. So important for Figaro to get at least five under his belt tonight. If that doesn't happen, Ron Renke, uh, not sure what he's going to do for tomorrow. John Mayberry Jr. at the plate for the Phillies. And he lines one into left center. Hit hard. That's going to go to the wall. Gomez will play it off the wall. It's a double for John Mayberry. Well, his bat really starting to heat up for the Phillies. Had a walk off grand slam against the Marlins earlier this week. A good low ball hitter. Fastball at 95 on the gun, but down in his own. And look at Mayberry just goes down and. Drops ahead of the bat on it, and he just hits a rocket line drive in left center. Can't hit him much harder than that. Mayberry was three for five yesterday, had an RBI. Hit the Brewers well last year. It was nine for 25 against Milwaukee last season. He's carried it over to this season. So a runner in scoring position quickly against Figaro, and here is Jimmy Rollins. Now Rollins is typically the Phillies leadoff hitter and the Phillies have their offense set up the way they want it when he is the leadoff man. But because of the injury to Chase Utley. Rollins hits in the three hole where Utley would normally normally be and it gives Charlie Manuel a uh, proven run producer in that three spot in the batting order. That ball's hit well slicing away from Gomez down it goes. Mayberry around third. He'll score. Gomez does a nice job to hold Rollins to a single. But just like that, the Phillies are on the board. Hey, Rollins, a little slicing fly ball going away from Gomez. And, you know, Rollins not running all that well right now. Kind of uh, creeping out of that box. The ball kept slicing away from Gomez, and he did a nice job getting it in quickly to keep Rollins at first, keeping that double play alive. Yeah, Mayberry not sure right away, but scores easily. 
One to nothing Philadelphia as Rollins drives in his 21st of the year. He fouled two pitches off of his foot last Friday against Milwaukee and uh, he's having a lot of trouble with that right foot. In that game after he fouled those two pitches off the foot and that came in on back to back pitches. Rollins actually ended up stealing a base in that game but the next day Saturday he was not able to go. So we'll see how mobile Rollins is tonight. Big slugger Ryan Howard at the plate and Figaro misses high and away. Man Lucroy has been throwing the baseball pretty well throwing out base runners. Figaro somewhat average getting the ball to his catcher. And depending on how Rollins feels he might steal when he's healthy doesn't matter who's pitching. He'll steal a base. Ryan Howard takes a ball. 2 0 the count on Howard. Now the Brewers have allowed first inning runs against their opponent in four of the last five games. And an RBI single by Jimmy Rollins tonight. I mean, it's difficult to play from behind, even when you're scoring a lot of runs, but the Brewers have not. And that makes it even more difficult when you're playing from behind. Well, the two big lefty hitters in this lineup, Howard and Dominic Brown. Two guys you want to play with nobody on base. Howard's having a so so season. He's still driving in runs. He's hitting 250, has seven home runs, 30 runs batted in. Dominic Brown has been their best hitter. Dominic Brown has put up MVP type numbers at this point, and he becomes the Bat, you don't want to let beat you. Man, after be, what we've seen out of him this year, man, because of that, Ryan Howard. I mean, teams are pitching to him. His on-base percentage under 300, so they're not pitching around him. He's not walking much. A 270 career hitter who is hitting 250 coming in, one of the great run producers in the decade and last decade. And Howard swings and misses. Down he goes on strikes. Well, that was right down the heart of the plate, and Howard came up empty. Right up in the strike zone. You get that baseball further down to where he threw it to Mayberry, and it's a lot easier to get to, especially to a left handed batter. But you get it up there, up around the belt, and Ryan Howard swings right through it. And I think you see right there in that particular pitch the difference between Ryan Howard. Back in his MVP days in Ryan Howard right now as he has aged a little the bat has slowed down just uh, slowed down just a little bit. Now here's Dominic Brown now with two away and Figaro starts him with strike one. Red hot Dominic Brown. 18 home runs leads the National League. He's just two off the major league lead. Chris Davis of the Orioles has 20. 289 average. He's driven in 44. Had a couple of hits last night, and he stole two bases in the same sequence. And he likes to pull the baseball from what we've seen of him so far. We've seen him four games. He likes to pull it going around from center field down the right field line. And pretty good throw by Figaro. Quick feet. No balls and a strike on Brown. Rollins at first. Stays put. Brown takes strike two. Man, Dominic Brown, you know, he's been hot, but you know, hitting home runs. Ten of his last 20 hits are home runs. So when he connects, they fly. And of those 18 home runs, 15 have come since May 1st. So a relatively benign start for him with the home run ball but anything but through the month of May and to start the month of June he was the National League player of the month in the month of May he hit 12 home runs 25 RBIs in May. Two of those came against Milwaukee on the final day of May last Friday and didn't walk. Yeah not one walk the entire month. How, how does that happen. <laughs> 
Figaro's got him 0 2. And Brown into left field. Easy enough for Braun. Well, the Phillies score. They get an RBI from Rollins. 1 0 Philadelphia. The Brewers coming up for the first time. Gives the Phillies an early lead here tonight. And the Brewers ready to match up against Cliff Lee. Ron Renneke trying to find the right batting order to score some runs against Lee. Scored three against him in Philadelphia last Sunday. The Piggly Wiggly batting order has Aoki, Segura, and Braun at the top. No changes there. Ramirez, Lucroy, and Gomez. And then the changes down at the bottom of the order with Weeks, Betancourt, and Figaro. Uh, and Cliff Lee making his 13th start of the year. He's off to a tremendous start in 2013. You see his overall numbers throughout his career. Cliff Lee, 132 and 180, or, or I should say 80 win, 80 losses, a 354 earned run average. You can see keeps the butt baseball in the ballpark. And Lee beating the Brewers for the first time in his career last Sunday. Works fast, throws strikes. And uh, we were talking about it in the open that it's imperative not to let Cliff Lee get in his rhythm on the mound because when he gets in that quick pace rhythm, he can be very tough to deal with. Always on the go, Cliff Lee. Yeah, we documented that on our open today. And uh, you, you got to slow this guy down, get him out of his pacing a little bit, frustrate him a bit because he likes to get it and get it back to the catcher. Now Nothing wrong with stepping out and making him wait. You put the numbers up uh, 12 seconds between pitches. Typically for Cliff Lee, it's about 12 to 15 seconds between. As I okay, little chopper going to be tough. Galvis, no chance. And an infield hit for Nori Aoki to start it tonight. Brewers lead the league in infield hits as a team, and Aoki and Segura. Have been the two top performers in that category. Yeah, just putting the bat on the baseball against a tough left hander and running quickly down that line. No chance for Galvis. And Brewers historically have hit Cliff Lee. As you see what the Brewers have done this year infield hits. Aoki, Segura, and Gomez, most of them. So here is Gene Segura now. Comes in fourth in the league in batting, hitting 338. And a bouncing ball right side. Galvis going to second for the out. Nice play by Freddie Galvis to get the lead out at second base. Yeah, the Menards Phillies defense. No changes from last night. Yeah, the same defensive alignment except for Cliff Lee. Phillies about middle of the pack in total defense in the National League. They've committed 35 errors and turned 52 double plays. Jimmy Rollins, the gold glove shortstop in the National League last year. The third of his career, actually the fourth of his career. And here is Ryan Braun. A rock back to Cliff Lee, and you talked about how quick a pace he likes to go. What would you say is normal 
for a starting pitcher Man, between pitches. That's 20 seconds. I mean, that's what baseball in the rule book, it tells you have 20 seconds between pitches. But that's once you have the baseball, you have 20 seconds. Cliff Lee is glove to glove 12 seconds most of the time out of the windup. Out of the stretch, he's going to be a little bit more, a little bit more deliberate. Well, Ryan Braun has great numbers against Cliff Lee throughout his career. Nine hits, three of those home runs, and a pretty good sample size as well with 19 career at bats, a 474 batting average. And there are a few guys in the Brewers' batting order that have had success against Lee: Braun, Ramirez. Carlos Gomez. And Ryan doubled against Cliff Lee back in Philly. As Cliff Lee strikes him out for the second out of the inning, and Braun got caught guessing. And one of the amazing things about his start, and no walks, 11 strikeouts, but really did it with two different pitches. Here's one of them, the cut fastball, and the other one, a four seamer. That ordinarily is going to work away to right handed batters. The cutter in. Flip up a slow curve every now and again. And everything just has enough movement, enough tweaks. The Segura takes off. It's a breaking ball. The throw to second is late. Mark Kratz got off a nice throw from his knees. But Segura able to steal the base, his 16th, and a runner in the scoring position with two away. And yeah, Segura picked a pretty good pitch. He didn't have a very big lead. He went on the first move and Lead to a curveball, and that's what allowed Segura to steal a bag. Segura is 16 out of 18 in stolen bases this year. And a quick throw to second base. The timeout was called at the time. Ramirez asked for it. The home plate umpire, John Tempain, had granted him time. So that throw was all for fun. <laughs> Tell that to Segura. He uh, had a little bit of a a moment right there. Tony might have got picked off. <laughs> a little bit of anxiety working. Yeah. <laughs> you see the Brewers currently third in the league in steals. They led the league in that category last year. Oh, well, Ramos Ramirez, a 307 hitter coming in, had a hit last night, one for three. Spent a month on the disabled list with a left knee injury. Second time he had injured that knee. It happened in spring training as well. And that shut him down for two weeks this spring. We were talking to Ron Renneke today about his hobbled middle of the order. Ryan Braun, who's nursing a thumb injury, and Aramis Ramirez, who has the knee injury. And these are two bats that have to be in the lineup if the Brewers are going to have any success. But not even close to 100% right now, which is a little bit concerning. Yeah, the Brewers manager would love to be able to sit both of them down for a few days, but the way things are going, just can't do it. Neither one of them want to sit. Well, you're right, uh, far from 100%. You know, in another scenario, if, if this was a minor league scenario, these guys were just prospects and not stars, you'd probably sit them for a week just to get right. Or if they were not. Such big run producers in the lineup. You, you would also think about days off. But Rock hit it on the head. These guys, they know they have to be in the lineup. And they're not really giving Renicky a choice in that matter. And so the question becomes is a, an 80 to 90 percent Braun and Ramirez better than no Braun and Ramirez? And the answer to that is uh, that's easy. That's yes. Now Ramirez has been a great run producer throughout his career. Drove in 100 again last year for Milwaukee after a very slow start to the season. No balls, two strikes. Fights another one off. And Cliff Lee just doesn't believe in wasting pitches, does he? Just one after the other, keeps pounding the strike zone. It's been an 0-2 count for a while now to Ramirez. And Cliff Lee is at the top of his game once again this season. He's only thrown one pitch out of the strike zone in this first inning. 
The 0 2 and Ramirez fouls another one back. Lee comes in with seven wins. That's good enough for fifth in the National League. And his 2 4 5 ERA is seventh best in the National League. Patrick Corbin is the league leader in victories, the left hander with the Diamondbacks. He has nine. ERA leader is Shelby Miller of the St. Louis Cardinals, a 1 9 1 earned run average. Ramirez just continuing to foul pitches off. Eight pitches now to Ramirez. Every one of them strikes. Got a real baseball souvenir to take home. O2 pitch again, and Lee misses down and in. And he's got a little stare down for John Tempain, the young umpire. <laughs> yeah, Lee'll do that too. Yeah. Looked like it might have been in, down and in, but yeah, who knows? A little too close to take. It's only the second ball he's thrown. This is the tenth pitch of the at bat, and a swing and a miss. So Lee keeps after Ramirez and strikes him out. Back-to-back -back K's to end the first. So Friday night at the ballpark tonight. Beautiful night for baseball. The Brewers and the Phillies game two of this four game series. Phillies up one nothing and rock our car email the booth question comes from Wyatt and he wants to know what do you see as a long term solution for the Brewers starting rotation. Oh you get to play GM here. I mean, what is considered long term maybe <laughs> two months out. I'm going to answer it this way. I think right now, I think what the Brewers would like to see would be Gardo Los, Chris Narvison. You throw a left-hander in there. Mm -hmm. You get Estrada back off the disabled list and Peralta to start getting things together. And I think that uh, that would be the rotation that Ron Renicky would like to see out there every fifth day for the rest of this year. Beyond that, I have no way of knowing. Well, we're going to have Doug Melvin join us in the third inning, and we'll have to ask him that question. Take you off the hot seat a little bit. That was a nice answer, though. I like I like what you have to say. And Narvison's coming along. He's made a couple of starts. Probably another couple of weeks. Uh, Narvison in a minor league rehab scenario. An injured finger for Narvison. Delman Young takes a ball down and away. One ball, two strikes on Young. Young's been another guy. Swinging a power bat lately has five home runs his last 15 games for the Phillies. 
Charlie Manuel has been putting him in the lineup every day pretty much. He's got big power to all fields. Now Ben Revere was in the leadoff spot and playing center field when Chase Utley went down with the injury at second base that rearranged the lineup a little bit Revere struggled in that role and that's probably going to open up some more playing time for Delman Young because now Manuel can use Mayberry in center which is his natural position and Young can remain in right field. Two and two. Misses away. Three balls, two strikes. Young has great opposite field power, which is why Nori Aoki is standing in the ATI zone. I think he's part of the party out there. <laughs> <laughs> Heels on the warning track. Yep. Aoki, uh, you know, he's at home and. He doesn't speak a whole lot of English, but he's enough to be uh, privy to the conversation right behind him. That's about as deep as you can play it and toward the line. Three two pitch and off the glove of Betancourt a base hit for Young. And a single to start the second for the Phillies right fielder. That's a six game hitting streak for Delman Young and not often you see a, an outfielder. That deep in the off field with a right hander and right hander at the plate and a right fielder that deep with nobody on base. A lot of times you'll see that with a man at first and two outs playing no doubles. And I hope he loves to play deep. So here's Eric Kratz getting most of the playing time now with Carlos Ruiz on the disabled list with a hamstring injury. Kratz goes into right field shallow but Aoki is there and he lost it briefly. The son makes the catch but he lost that one just enough to uh, cause some interest with that fly ball. Yeah the sun uh, blazing through those glass panels above the stands along the third baseline. Aoki uh, doing a nice job pulling the head away but had the glove in a good spot and made the catch. Looked fairly routine when it was hit. I got the sun uh, shining brightly through the panels. The sun, as it sets, it lights up those panels behind a home plate, both sides on the first base side and the third base side above the grandstands. Sometimes outfielders struggle with the message boards as well. The uh, the LED lights, the LED lights that go around, and uh, that's what he's looking into. So that's a Baseball colored background. Yeah. This time of night. No balls and a strike. Freddie Galvis a swing and a miss. And it's 0 2. Galvis has been a versatile player for the Phillies. We saw him in Philadelphia play third, short, and second. Yeah, switch hitter that makes decent contact. Has a very strong throwing arm, a shortstop by trade. And a swing and a miss. Down he goes on strikes. Second strikeout for Figaro. And two gone with a pitcher, Cliff Lee, coming up. Our head and shoulders whiff. Number two for Figaro. Overpowering Galvis on a fastball off the outside corner, and Galvis not even close. You see how far up in that box he is, making that fastball even quicker to him. So here is Cliff Lee who can handle the bat. He is uh, certainly a guy you have to pay attention to. From a pitching perspective, Lee has six hits this year. He's six for 21 this season, and he comes in with a 286 batting average. Batting with two outs and a runner at first. A 
Lee is also very fast. And he'll leg out a number of infield hits each year. And on occasion, Charlie Manuel will use him as a pinch runner. Last time he used him as a pinch runner, he got picked off. Right. Uh, you know, he's not one of those guys, those pitchers that hit the ball and just kind of jog to first. He'll bust it down that line. No balls, two strikes on Lee. And he strikes out. Figaro went with the heat. And his third strikeout. Nice clean inning for Figaro. One nothing Phillies. Second and come out to the ballpark as the Brewers host the Phillies tomorrow and Sunday for tickets. Call 414 902 4000 or visit Brewers.com. Service Sarah's day tomorrow, partner, and uh, nice. Sunday is Carlos Gomez bobblehead day. Looking forward to all of that. I got a sneak preview of the bobblehead today. It's a good one. It's kind of like a metallic gold jersey on the bobblehead. Beautiful night for baseball here. The roof is open. What a great scene that is. Cliff Lee back to work. Had a couple of strikeouts in the first. He did give up an infield hit to Aoki. Struck out Braun and Ramirez to end the first inning. And it'll be Jonathan Lucroy to start it for Milwaukee. Lucroy had that great run against the Phillies in Philadelphia. Hit three home runs. In that series, in that three game series, he's just two for 12 on this homestand. Hitless so far against the Phillies, 0 for 4. Well, Luke Roy, one of those guys that will back out of the batter's box from time to time and slowing down Cliff Lee a bit. Lee does not stray too far from that pitcher's rubber. And I suppose there's a little bit of a of a rhythm with the catcher as well. I mean, Lee seems like a fun guy to catch because he throws strikes with everything he has. But you probably got to do things a little differently with Cliff Lee than a lot of other pitchers. Yeah, and it really looks like they uh, they changed up their pattern. As Lucroy lines one to center, but right at Mayberry. Well, oh, hit it right on the nose. Nothing to show for it. Well, don't forget the Brewers are on Fox tomorrow. Baseball night in America. MLB on Fox. Phillies Brewers. Six o'clock Central Time. The start time. Kenny Albert will have the play-by-play. -play. Aaron Karros will offer his expert analysis and his outstanding hair. Nice chance to see the Fox crew here prepping for the game today. Kenny joined us on our pregame show. Great guy. Yep. Great broadcaster. And always uh, enjoy having Fox here at Miller Park. 
Do they come into our booth? Or do they go into the one next door? Yeah, they're going to be in here. We're going to have to lock some things down. I mean, total lockdown, taking things yeah. off walls. You know how they can be. Right, right. Can be a little awkward. All of your, uh, your birthday stuff hanging up here has <laughs> got to get taken down. That's the first thing that's going to go, you know. Now, you know, it took me uh, about 30 minutes to get all that put up before you guys got here today. So it's a nice touch. I had a great time. Had some uh, ABBA playing on the CD. Yeah, good stuff. Yep. That was fun. Well, that's good. You know, you and Mike and Salo, big uh, birthday guys. Mm -hmm. and it's always good. We are. Just, we're just alike in that regard, actually. <laughs> <laughs> now we have uh, Renee Hafferman, our uh, wonderful stage director. Uh, yes. You know, made it nice for you today. She did. That's why we love her so much. As Gomez goes down the line. And Gomez on his way to second. Over to cut it off is Brown. Gomez thinking about third. He's on his way. And the throw comes in late. Gomez, a triple. Wow. Flying around the bases. We don't see that every day. A triple down the left field line. And Gomez really never thought about slowing down around second base. He just kept going. And. Wanted to get the third base with less than two outs. Pretty good gamble, but in the way the Brewers have been struggling to score runs. There's that cut fastball down and in. Gomez loves it in on him. Just out of the reach of Michael Young and down into the corner. And just a little bit of a problem. Dominic Brown having a tough time with it. Kind of got caught in something under that padding. And that's all it took for Gomez to get the third base. The wheels in motion, Gomez. And nobody goes to or home to third or as fast. There may be some equally as fast, but none faster for Carlos Gomez. And that's a that's a risk you don't mind him taking right there. Now he's at third with one out. That forces the Phillies infield in with Ricky Weeks at the plate. I was talking to Gomez uh, a couple of days ago about you know turning the bases. And having and how do you cut the bags going as fast as he does? He says he actually has to slow down a little bit when he hits the bag to be able to make that turn. That's how fast he's going. Now, triples on base hits to left field are rare. Gomez has a couple of them this year, five total. As Weeks takes it down and in, so Ricky not biting, and Cliff Lee has fallen behind three and zero. Oh. Ricky got a pinch hit appearance last night. His, his playing time has been cut short with the arrival of Scooter Jeanette, but Weeks is actually swinging the bat pretty well lately. He's three for six on this homestand. And hitting it to all fields. Now left field, center right, and hitting it with authority. Infield in for Philadelphia. Tying run at third. Weeks swings and misses. Back in there goes Lee. And it's three and two. The bread and butter for Cliff Lee that cut fastball. Cuts in on a right hander and down. See what he has in mind for him here. A fastball and it missed. Cliff Lee issues a walk, a rare walk given up by Lee. And now first and third with one out and Betancourt coming up. That only his 14th walk this year. Did not walk a batter in Philadelphia against Milwaukee. So Uni B will get a chance to drive in some runs. And of course, Cliff Lee. You know, he's thinking about a ground ball double play to get him out of this inning. Betancourt with eight home runs this season. Got a great run from mid April into mid May. Now has slid back into a bit of a utility role for the Brewers. He and Juan Francisco will. Share the duties at third and first. Quickly 0 and 2 on Betancourt. No, 
the Brewers have just one win on this homestand, and Betancourt was responsible for it. And a walk-off double against the Oakland Athletics on Tuesday. Dramatic game-winning hit in the 10th inning. Gomez scoring all the way from first on that base hit to right center. And a reward for a lot of hard work for Betancourt trying to get his swing back together. He went through a terrible slump the last couple of weeks of May and it has carried over into June but to see him go to right field. Yeah. yeah he's a got, good sign. He got pull conscious when he was having a tough time but took that ball nicely in the right center. 0 2 pitch and a breaking ball missed not by much. Well, he's already thrown more curveballs in this start already than he did the entire game in Philly. And he knew he was going to do something different. Back to back starts against the same team. And it seems like the curveball is going to be used quite a bit more. Going with a change up here. And the one two, and it's low. Two balls, two strikes on Betancourt. Philly scored in the first. Jimmy Rollins with a one out RBI single. After the Mayberry double. And the Brewers trying to answer here in the second inning. Got him. Chased one. The fastball. Looked too good to take. And Betancourt is down on strikes. That's the third strikeout for Lee. Well, he's so patient with Betancourt to get the count to two and two. He started 0 and 2. Took a couple of close ones and then waved at a pitch about neck high. This pitch not even close. Well, and that is the key batter for Cliff Lee. Retiring the eighth place hitter to get to the pitcher now. Alfredo Figaro. Figaro does have a hit this year. He's one for four. Oh and two odds are against him odds are against most hitters but especially a pitcher at the right. plate well, you never know make a mistake you, know, you never know quickly oh and two Gomez ready to run in case Lee spins one in the dirt and down he goes so Lee for the second straight inning with back to back strikeouts the Brewers strand a pair. For the third inning, we always try to catch up with Doug Melvin. Wants a home stand, and here he is, and uh, got a lot to talk about. Obviously, we'll talk about what's going on on the field with the Brewers, and uh, you're just coming off the draft. 
Uh, Doug, that, that was a late night last night for you guys. Uh, what time did you wrap things up last night? I think we left here. I left at one o'clock, and I know Bruce and some of the scouts were still here, so they were putting together the list uh, for the draft picks today. Yesterday we drafted the first two rounds, and uh, and then went eight rounds today. Now it seemed like prior to yesterday's draft. There was a lot of talk about how uh, patient you guys will have to be. You didn't draft until the 54th pick. But today the tone seems a little bit differently. You guys, it seems like, are very happy with who you were able to draft in those positions. Yeah, today was uh, was different. After the compensation picks all got out of the way, um, everybody gets a minute between each pick, and everybody's on uh, on level grounds now with the draft pick. So we drafted up through the 10th round today, and. And we like what uh, Bruce is happy and the scouts are happy what we what we have up to this point. So uh, you know very pleased with our first round pick. And Devin Williams is a young high school pitcher out of St. Louis and uh, and he was a guy that we felt was uh, on our board that we you know we didn't really discuss him at length early because we didn't think he would be there. And then as the board was uh, he was coming down the board we had to uh, you know get together and talk about him again. But. Uh, we're very pleased to have him and then Tucker Newhouse who we worked out in here and Tucker didn't play a whole lot in Florida. He had some injuries. He had a he had a situation at home a personal situation at home and um, didn't get to play a lot. He played for Wade Boggs down in Florida mm -hmm. and uh, real good bat left handed hitter plays shortstop big kid. I asked him who his favorite player is that he follows. He said Troy Tulowitzki and I said why he said because he proved that Big guys can play shortstop. Nice. And he said that's what I want to do. <laughs> well, it's uh, it's fascinating the draft. We're going to have a special uh, feature on the draft. Thank you for allowing our cameras in uh, as well. That was uh, fascinating to see that they're editing that now and they'll have uh, a presentation. But it is an interesting time uh, every year. And uh, we have a text question for you, Doug, courtesy of Ho Chunk Gaming. Who has the final say on selecting a draft choice? Uh, you, the GM, or the scouting director? Bruce side Charlie Milwaukee wants to know I don't like the player I do <laughs> <laughs> but no uh, we discussed enough we have a you know there's a five six seven days of meetings ahead of time and Bruce runs things by me as the general manager and I've never told them up I've only told them one time of a player not to take and uh, and that was it and uh, he's playing on the big legs but he's not he was a first round pick but he's not playing very well. I, I think he's in the big league. He's been back and forth. Mm -hmm. But that was the only time I ever said we're not going to take this player and that. So uh, otherwise, you got to you got to leave it up to them. You know, Bruce and his staff, they're out seeing the players. I I'll sometimes might see a player from down in Arizona or whatever. But it's very dangerous for me to go out and see one or two players. Terry Ryan and I talked about it before. And Terry comes from a solid scouting background. But you can't go out and see if two or three players and then try to compare them to to other players across the country and uh, very unfair. So you just have to rely on your scouting director and on your scouts and your cross checkers. We did have Dan O'Brien goes out Craig Council Zach Manassian some of the pro pro side front office. They, they went out and saw quite a few players. So just to form another opinion uh, in the end Bruce has to feel comfortable. He has to feel comfortable himself making that final call. Now you picked a uh, local kid uh, Josh Ewan from uh, UWM. Tell us about him. Yeah Harvey Keen uh, scouted uh, him and obviously we, we had him for a workout here. He's got a real good arm. He's got a power arm and uh, he's got a fresh arm. He hasn't pitched a whole lot over at UWM. He's from Oshkosh and uh, after we drafted him uh, today Harvey got three text messages from other clubs that they were taking him in that round and uh, so he's a power arm that we like as we talked about maybe starting him. He's pitched in the bullpen at UWM, so we took him in the uh, fifth round, and uh, and uh, uh, just a good arm to have. And we took a couple college pitchers before him. So after Williams and Newhouse, we went with uh, three college pitchers. Is there a particular philosophy that you wanted to stick to uh, before the draft that that you stuck to, or did things change as the names start to fall off the board? Yeah, we you know we always take the best player. Uh, when when that player comes up on the board, you you very seldom would uh, draft just because of your major league club because there's such a uh, developmental stage for these players or, or path for these players that you know uh, could go four years before that player gets there and four years in the big leagues. Who knows where your players are? Um, so you take the best player at that particular time, stay with that, and on the pitching side, you're looking for for arms. We try to get. 
bigger physical guys. Um, you know, and you can go both ways. There's some guys that throw strikes that aren't aren't the, don't have the power of fastball. So it's tough. There's a uh, there's a whole list of players up there. There's a lot of players that were what we call unsignable high school kids that where we drafted in the 54th pick. We had no chance. We just put them on the unsignable board because um, our slot I think was a million dollars and kids are saying unless I get a million five I'm going to school and that mm -hmm. so there's unsignable list and then there's a board of medical risk too so um, you have a pool of players and uh, that can be different from some other team pool of players from where you're drafting so it's it's always interesting we always enjoy it um, and that it is tiring after a while but it is so important to an organization's success can you hang in there another half yeah. inning yeah. all right we'll talk about the current brewers and some of the uh, minor league players when we come back Back at Miller Park, we head to the bottom of the third inning. One nothing Phillies, a first inning run. Doug Melvin joins us here in the booth and uh, just wrapping up the draft. And I know you're uh, you're trying to keep things organized on the field uh, with what's going on with the current Brewers. You're also trying to keep things organized with the draft. And I'm sure uh, is there a moment for you to exhale here <laughs> in, the, in the next couple of days? Well, you know, if we've other general managers, we've talked about it before. It's the only sport that has a draft right in the middle of your season. Mm -hmm. And you know if your team's going good you're feeling good you feel good in the draft room your team's not playing so well you got to keep uh, your eye and your pulse on on both the draft and on the big league club so uh, it, it gets tough at time but uh, it did really with the way we're playing it took me away from <laughs> from where we're watching our games at this point and sort of took me away from a little bit and gave me an opportunity to to get to the minor leagues and the drafts and things that I like and meantime you still got to keep a pulse on the day to day activities with our major league club about a third of the way through the season uh, your assessment so far your thoughts on uh, on the team well you know we haven't been uh, very consistent obviously our record our record our record but your record will tell you how you play basically and that's what it is and uh, and that so we can't uh, we can't make excuses we haven't uh, our starting pitching hasn't been uh, very consistent. Our bullpen. I had a uh, um, one of our stat people, uh, Carl Mueller, just sent me something that our bullpen since April the 10th has been the best in the baseball, mm -hmm. and uh, and that's so that's our strength right now. And, and if our starters can keep the game close and uh, not have these five run innings early in the game, our bullpen gives us a chance. Our offense, we're ninth in runs scored. Uh, we're not hitting home runs like we have in the past. Last year we had 101 home runs at the All Star break. So we're not hitting scoring with home runs. So I think it's evident that you know we're missing you know Corey Hart's bat um, from the start of the year. We, uh, Ricky hasn't hit the home runs. Aramis was out. He hasn't hit the home run. So that the home run, which has been a big part of our success and our home record, hitting home runs in this ballpark, we just haven't done that as well this year. And if we're not hitting the home runs, you got to be fundamentally sound on the offensive side. And, and we haven't been. 
I think a little surprising is we're sixth in the league and run runners was hitting with runners in scoring mm -hmm. position. Some people may think that's uh, doesn't appear to be the, the way doesn't seem like it but it also may mean that we're not getting a lot of runners in scoring position too so um, there's a lot of things that we need to improve on for us to get the, to win more games well one thing that will help you have Corey Hart uh, what's going on with Corey his uh, progress has been slowed somewhat uh, when is he expected uh, yeah, back? He's, he's still a ways away yet he's taken batting practice here and um, you know again we don't really have a date on it when he's going to be coming back so and when he does come back, it's it's got to it's going to have to be tough for him to miss as much time as he has. The amount of weight you have to put on your knee and your leg, and and that a little it'll uh, delay him playing on a regular basis. So um, at this point, we're not really counting on it. That's one of the reasons we went out and got Francisco, um, brought up Scooter Jeanette. We wanted to get a little more left-handed uh, with our ball club, so maybe we can do some a little bit of semi-platooning. Uh, to give Ron more opportunities uh, in that regard to help us have more balance on the bench. I know there's been two games this year with us carrying 13 pitchers, been two games where we had pitchers right. uh, pitching or hitting in the last inning of a ball game. And, and uh, when you have 13 pitchers, that, that can happen. So ideally, you'd like to get the 12 pitchers. And since we're not the same offensive club we've been in the past, to give Ron the opportunities with some flexibility and some different look offensive weapons. Well, Ramos Ramirez with two on right off the end of the bat and it goes over the bag a fair ball for out number two both runners will advance. How much interaction with with the team do you have at this point. You know I know Ron has had a, obviously a lot of uh, interaction as far as individual players but a couple of team meetings as well. How about from the GM's perspective. Yeah, you know, I got to get uh, sit down with Ron. We try to meet individually. We've had meetings with uh, the coaches when we haven't played well, trying to get some ideas and thoughts. And, and then we got people in the front office, obviously, Gord, Craig Council, um, Zach, Carl. We've got a Tom Flanagan. We all put our heads together. We see the game from a different view than downstairs. And um, you have to communicate, and, and we do that on a regular basis. Um, sometimes there's not a lot of things you can do. And, uh, you got to hope that your players that you were counting on can step up and perform and you know they do it on given days but we have to do it on a consistent basis because a lot of times you just can't do things you're with your club the way we have it you know there's only a one or two players that you can actually option out to make a move and uh, I've always said even last year I said it is getting off to bad starts is not good because you just don't have the same player movement as you do later on in the season when you have injuries early in the year. Um, there's no free agent players out there. Teams aren't motivated to make trades. So you got to use guys coming out of spring training. We do have to get off to better starts. We've had two years in a row. We've got off to bad starts coming out of spring training. We've talked about that and you have to find ways to come out of spring training and be ready to go out there and win some ball games early because uh, last year we got we, we did well after the Grinky trade, but we can't be doing that every year. And now we put ourselves in a, in a deep hole. So we got some serious decision making uh, to do with our ball club. And um, you know I do believe sometimes there's a point where you have to transition and take maybe a step back before you can move forward. Luke Roy at the plate and an 0-2 count against Lee, and that one misses inside. Maybe too tough to ask you with two outs, but. Are you planning on being active toward the trade deadline. You've got a lot of time still almost two months before that time comes. But what is your approach moving forward. It'll all depend on how we're playing at that time. But uh, I'm always prepared. We're always prepared to be active. Um, there's always going to be teams motivated to make some trades to try to win. Uh, you know teams that have gone out there hoping to win and get into postseason. So. We'll have to be available. We've always always have to be available to go both ways. All right, Doug. Well, thanks for coming by. Always enjoy visiting okay. with you. Great, thank All you. Right. Continued success signing players. Doug Melvin Brewers, general manager, as we head to the fourth.
Grace have a one to nothing lead. And look at that. It's Maddie Anderson in the house wishing her dad, B.A., a happy birthday. We're happy to celebrate with B.A. here at Miller Park. We hope fans are enjoying the game. And the last time that the Brewers saw Cliff Lee, he said he could have thrown a complete game had it not been for some cramping because of dehydration. He's one of the toughest in the game. So tonight on our AT&T Twitter poll, we're asking fans, who is the toughest lefty starter in the big leagues? Is it Clayton Kershaw, who the Brewers saw twice already? Tonight's starter, Cliff Lee, or former Brewers, CC Sabathia. And B.A., I don't know if your numbers can compete with these guys, but we'll write you in for the other category and wish you a feliz cumpleaños. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. And uh, sounds like a conspiracy going on here, Rocky. Look what you started, man. You got it all wrong, my friend. <laughs> you just got a lot of people wishing you a happy birthday or a Feliz Cumpleaños. Co no, no. <laughs> Feliz Cumpleaños. cumpleaños. Well, that was close. Cumpleaños. All right. Companion. Yeah, okay. Well, same. We'll have a little Spanish lesson tomorrow with uh, Sofia. Okay. Her Costa Rican dialect. That's pretty good. You know Spanish too? Poquito. That's amazing. Going up in Tejas. <laughs> That's happy birthday in Spanish. Yeah. Feliz cumpleaños. Right, I know. Yeah. You ever watch Dora the Explorer, Rock? No, I don't. You will. Now that you're a grandfather. As Figaro strikes out, Ryan Howard. Now tonight's game on Fox Sports Wisconsin brought to you by Piggly Wiggly, the official supermarket of Fox Sports Wisconsin. By Ho Chunk Gaming Wisconsin, your ticket to more. And by Marshfield Clinic. Don't just live, shine. Beautiful Miller Park on a Friday night. Brewers have had a couple of opportunities against Cliff Lee. But have uh, stranded some runners in this game. Figaro is going along through three innings with just one run allowed. That came in the first. It was Jimmy Rollins driving in John Mayberry. Yeah, a couple of times the Brewers have had a man at third base, not able to come up with that big hit. 0 for 5 with the Brewers with runners in scoring position. They've had chances to score in each of the first three innings. Well, the Brewers with four hits. Lee's given up a walk, and uh, Milwaukee's left five on already in the first three. As Brown pulls one right field, Aoki over and can't get there. And it bounces. High up over his head. And Brown will stop at second with a double. Even playing very deep out in right field. Now lucky not able to get there. There's that curveball. It was supposed to be on the outside corner, ended up middle in, and uh, Figaro very fortunate that ball wasn't hit out of the ballpark. That might be an error on Nori. And we'll see. It's certainly one that he should have had, and it'll be a double. Now, if he gets that baseball in his glove and makes a throw in, he might have a shot at second yep. base. I think you're right. So Brown continues to hurt the Brewers. He is now nine for 16 against Milwaukee this season. That includes three home runs, nine hits in just five games for Brown. Well, we appreciate Doug Melvin coming up, Brewers general manager. Not an easy time for him to uh, have to talk about the Brewers right now. And especially coming off the draft. And be interesting to see if uh, these players emerge as big league players. It's always fun to talk about the draft and they move into the, to the system. The next step after you draft a player, you, you got to get them signed. And just talking to Doug between innings just to follow up. The draft discussion. Uh, he felt very confident about getting uh, the players that they have already selected signed soon, and that had a lot to do with why they drafted him when they did. Yeah, get him in the system, uh, you know, start their pro careers, and better shot that they get to the big league sooner. And if uh, any of you draft picks are out there watching this telecast, Bill Schroeder has a message for you. What would that be? Sign and get going. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's what I just said. <laughs> just don't don't I hesitate. Thought, I thought it was a different <laughs> message. I'm sorry. No, same message. Okay. <laughs> the pot of gold is at the end of the rainbow, not in the front. Right. Right. Not in the beginning. And some guys just uh, you know drag it out. They they miss time and it cost them in the end.
Other thing is, you know, you, you sign early, you get to come up and uh, get interviewed by you and I. Good point. I mean, that's a little carrot that they can dangle. Not until you sign the contract. Bring him here to Miller Park. You get carrot. to go on TV with me and Brian. Yep. Come, come up, on in, up. The, in the decorated booth. So. Then I'll give him some real advice. Devin Williams, the first pick for the Brewers, came in the second round. And uh, I thought it was interesting with uh, with Devin Williams and the discussions about him that, that the most thought he was going to go in the top 20 rounds in the first round. He did not. The fact that uh, he still has the opportunity to go to college, play college ball, but the Brewers taking a chance, trying to get him uh, signed as soon as possible and feeling very good about getting Williams into the system and Ball skips away from Lucroy and Brown always an aggressive base runner. Will take third base on a wild pitch. And he is there with just one out. And take that big secondary lead and that ball scoots away. You take that extra base easily. And a good effort by Lucroy just wasn't able to square himself enough. You can see the shoulders opened up a little bit and that's why it squirted away. So at third base will bring the infield in with one away. Figaro against Delman Young two and two the count. Now the Brewers uh, Doug just touched on it briefly the slotting and it's a really complicated discussion but Devin Williams uh, is a, a technically a second rounder. He's the first Brewers pick but he went in the second round the 54th overall pick. And a high school kid out of Missouri, outside St. Louis. 18 years old. You figure that 92 could uh, grow to about 95 as he matures and hits the weight room. Only 18 years old. That's throwing it pretty good at 18. And what you hear about him is a lot of upside, great work ethic. Brewers have a, sp a particular slot, particular amount of money they can use to sign players in the second round. So. That's what Doug was referencing when he said we were only slotted uh, around a million dollars to sign that pick. And if they're unable to get Devin Williams signed and they'll get that pick next season in the second round. So they would actually add to their draft picks and depending on how they finish the regular season this year you know the Brewers would get back in the first round next season. Uh, they'd have probably three or four picks in the top 100 you would think. Well, they'd love to get him signed, but it would certainly uh, push that towards next year as well. But I know uh, Devin Williams comes with uh, very high praise from those who have seen him. And matter of fact, his video is available, a video of him pitching on uh, Brewers.com. Adam McCalvey posted that from the MLB Network coverage last night. You want to check him out. Pitch number nine of the at bat with Delman Young at the plate. And he muscles one right field, and that's fair. It's going to be a base hit and an RBI. Young will stop around first. And the Phillies have a two to nothing lead. And that was a good pitch by Figaro. I mean, he's got that one up and in. Second time that Young able to get a base hit to right. Something he doesn't do a whole lot of. Actually, a change up, up and in, but. Young pulls the hands in, still down on the handle just a little bit, but dumps it inside that right field line for a run scoring base hit. Well, the difference in the game, the Phillies able to get their hits with a man in scoring position, the Brewers have not. And here's Eric Kratz now. Starts him with a breaking ball. He's got a good curve tonight. I mean, he's breaking nice. He's got something on it. Good quick break to go along with that mid 90s fastball. Well, I'm sure Figaro, he uh, he knows the deal. He is sensing an opportunity here. The door is wide open for the starting pitching. As we take a look at our. Charter high speed pitch. 
Cliff Lee topping out at 92. Figaro at 97 tonight. Nothing right. wrong with his arm. Yeah, he's uh, been able to reach back on a couple of occasions, but he's been around 95 most of the night. Ball and a strike on Kratz. Got a runner at first. Figaro could use a double play ball here. Now the Figaro can go five or six innings. Five would be great for Figaro coming out of the bullpen. If he goes six, that would be a huge bonus. As Kratz launches one deep left center field, and that one is gone. Eric Kratz, just like that, adds to the lead. And a 2 0 game turns into a 4 0 game as Kratz bangs out number eight for the season. And that's what we've been talking about with Figaro giving up the home runs, his ninth allowed this year. And Kratz picking on a fastball in a 1 1 count. And it's 4 0. The Phillies stay Cliff Lee and Philly to a 7 0 lead. That one. Middle in and Kratz apparently looking for it and knocked it out of here way back in the left center. It's been a three run inning. Delman Young and Eric Kratz driving in the runs. As Galvis fouls it back. It is amazing how every night feels like the same as the previous. Brewers. Night after night, getting themselves into early jams. And the runs keep piling up for the starting pitching early in ball games. No, it's not just the pitching either. I mean, offense. I mean, the Brewers have had opportunities in this game to put some runs on the board and, and take a lead, have not been able to do it. Oh, and two to Galvis. Down he goes on strikes. Second time that Figaro has struck out Galvis and the fifth of the ball game for Figaro. Hey, let's check out tonight's Tavern of the Game winner. It's the Paper City Pub in Nina. If they call the Brewers in the next 24 hours, 902 4572, the phone number. They get 40 Miller Lite beer pen tickets to a Brewers home game this year. It's offer courtesy of the Tavern League of Wisconsin and Miller Lite. Here's Cliff Lee with two away. Philly's got a run in the first. They've added three here in the fourth on three hits. No balls, two strikes on Lee. Lee was a strikeout victim in the second inning. Bouncing ball to Weeks. That will retire the side, but not before the Phillies do big damage. Eric Kratz with a two run homer caps off a three run inning.
before they extended the Phillies lead to four nothing as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Let's check in with the crew in the community at the Children's Hospital of Wisconsin earlier today. Several brewers arrived on the Fan Express and surprised some young patients at Children's Hospital. It was Logan Schaefer, Rick Kranitz, Kyle Loesch, as well as Brandon Kinsler, and they were able to visit and have some fun with the kids and also bring some smiles to their faces, taking time out of their day to help someone else out in their day. So I had a chance to get over there to BA, and I don't know who was happier, the patients or the brewers, <laughs> but it was a really good time, though. Yeah, and it's a good thing. Uh, and it's a great job of those guys. You know, their day starts, these players, uh, it's not... You know, just a game time. They they get to the ballpark very early and start their long day of preparation for the game. They, uh, you know, a lot of those guys that we showed you are in the early group for hitting, and so kudos to those guys for uh, taking time out of their day. And I'm sure they brought a lot of smiles to the faces over there. And Brewers uh, organization works very hard to uh, you know give back to the community and. Not too many organizations, sports organizations overall, that do more in the community than the Brewers. That's something that Mark Adonazio and Debbie have committed to uh, early on, and they have continued. Well, Cliff Lee back on the mound now, a 4 nothing lead to work with as Carlos Gomez leads off. Gomez, a triple in the second inning. A one out triple and was left stranded. And that's something you can't do when you're facing Cliff Lee. When he gives you chances, you've got to cash in somehow. And Brewers haven't been able to do it in the first three innings. How about that? Gomez draws a walk, so a leadoff base runner. Brewers are getting some traffic on the bases against Lee. It's a second walk. Hey, come out to Miller Park on Friday, July 19th for Zuba Palooza. For just 34 bucks, get a Lowe's outfield box ticket to the game against the Marlins, plus a pair of Brewers Zubas pants. There's a Brewers.com slash special events for details. I had some Zubas back in the day. Did you really? Oh, yeah. I bet you did. With the mullet? They're sweet. Yep, yep. <laughs> Matter of fact, I uh, fixed up the mullet in the Zubas, actually, on a number of occasions. But a little spritz. Zuba Palooza. I might not be able to know... Uh, I might not know what uh, happy birthday is in Spanish, but I could pronounce Zuba Palooza. <laughs> I didn't know Zubas were back, but I would guess I was wrong. Oh, they've never been out. <laughs> uh, we gotta get a, you should do an instructional in your Zubas. The, mu the mullet, I'm not sure. That's uh, kind of out of fashion, but not the Zubas. There was a guy in uh, Minnesota when I was, when I was playing. We'd go to the Metrodome. And, uh -huh. There was a Zubas rep. He came into the clubhouse. We loaded up, baby. <laughs> it was awesome. And the matching T-shirt to go with it. We were yeah. styling. Now the Giorgio Armani guy, he had no business in your circle. No, not, not back in those days. <laughs> he didn't have any money for Giorgio Armani. Oh, yeah, here we go. Speaking of the, uh, that would have been a good night. For the mullet. The, That's a Zubas. You were the, the Zubas, Zubas there? That was uh, in Chicago on mullet night. Is that today? You're wearing the same outfit. No, no, I'm not. Dudes don't wear outfits. Ensemble? I don't, I'm not wearing the same outfit. You were. No, I'm not. I only wear the tie once. And that's it, huh? As Weeks lines one to right, a base hit. So the Brewers get something cranking here in the fourth with two on and nobody out. Able to muster a lot more activity on the bases against Lee tonight than they did five days ago. Two seam fastball from Cliff Lee and Ricky Weeks. You know, gets it down the trademark a little bit, but a nice approach. He shoots it in the right field. So Ricky Weeks continues to swing the bat over his last 13 games. He's hitting over 300. First and second with nobody out. Now this is a key hitter here, Betancourt, as he bats in the eighth spot. Likely that Renicky would pinch hit for Figaro next. Betancourt was up in a big spot in the second inning with one out and two on, and he struck out. And that virtually 
open the door for Lee to get out of the inning. He deals strike one. This is when Lee, and it's what all great pitchers do when they start to feel the heat, they become better. And he has been particularly good on the road this year. You know, being able to get out of situations like this, the best road ERA in all the National League. Jimmy Betancourt is on the Powerball home run leaderboard. He is third on the club. Ian Segura tied for third on the team with eight. Gomez still leads away with ten. And Braun's in a bit of a home run drought by his standards. Still sitting on nine. Big spot for Betancourt. And he's down 0-2. Cliff Lee's road numbers so impressive this year. And he is back to his ace form this season with the Phillies. One five three earned run average. That covers seven road starts. And in three of those seven starts, he has not allowed an earned run on the road. Only Clay Buckholtz has a lower ERA on the road, the Red Sox right hander, whose earned run average is 109. Leads the major leagues. Lee is second. Something else. 109. Wow. Well, the Brewers are down 4 0, needing a big hit from someone. Yeah, Betancourt lays off. And doing a nice job. Kind of what he did his first time up. Got down 0 and 2, took a couple of close pitches, and then ended up swinging at a pitch out of the strike zone. Got to be patient in these situations, make Lee throw strikes. Gomez at second, Weeks at first. And the 2 2, and Bedcourt launches one deep left center. That is way back, and it is off the base of the wall. Gomez will score. Weeks is right behind him. And he runs through the stop sign. Finally realizes that Speeder held him up. And is able to get back. And a run is in for the Brewers as Betancourt doubles. Yeah, good decision because we've already seen Freddie Galvis that throwing arm. And you know, when you have a 4 to nothing deficit, you don't want to be making outs at home plate. Well, there's a changeup by Cliff Lee. And let go. Betancourt doing a nice job staying back nearly hit that baseball out of here. I think that Betancourt thought it was out so did everybody else. And Ricky Weeks thought he was going to score but right at the last minute. Ed Cedar held him up. Man, Ricky never did slow down. He saw that ball go off the wall. Watch that late stop sign by Ed Cedar. And very fortunate that Brewers coach did not touch him or he would have been out. And fortunate that Galvis didn't recognize the play right away. He was ready to throw to home plate. They had it out at third base. And he uh, seen weak stop earlier. But after all of that, second and third, nobody out. And Figaro will bat. And he takes a strike. So maybe that changed the thinking of Ron Renneke a little bit. Now that a run is in, he's going to allow Figaro to swing the bat. And you just wonder if. A squeeze bunt is coming, whether it be a suicide or a safety squeeze. I don't think so. And it certainly won't be a suicide squeeze. And, you know, Figaro's got five at bats. You got nobody out. Worst case scenario, you have Aoki up with one out. Figaro just trying to make contact. Phillies have their infield in. And he does make contact. Bouncing ball to second. No play. In the score is Weeks. As Figaro is out at first. And the Brewer pitcher drives in a run. His second of the season. And it's four to two Phillies. Now, not only does he make contact and drive in the run. But he's able to get Betancourt over to third base. That's about as best case scenario as you can think of. Short of a base hit by Figaro. Drive him in. Get him over. And now Aoki can bring it to a one run deficit. With a fly ball. Now, what makes that play risky is the throwing arm of Freddie Galvis as a cannon 
for a throwing arm, which we have seen already in Philadelphia. And for a moment, he thought about making a play at the plate. Uh, Ricky got a great jump. A nice secondary lead. And as soon as that ball was beaten to the ground, he took off. And perhaps if it was a one run or an even game, Gallus might have gone home with it, but you know, with the lead, decided to take the shore out. So one gone, runner at third, two runs are in. And here is Aoki. And Aoki squares and Lee misses. Aoki likes to do that, that safety squeeze. He drops down the butt. Runner at third has to read it to determine whether he can try and score or not. Bedencore does not have good speed at third base. And Aoki chops one over to third base. Bedencore takes off late and is going to run into an out. Aoki sprinting around the bases, trying to get to third. And Bedencore still in a rundown. Has nowhere to go now, but oh, what a terrible, terrible rundown. That must have been at least five throws in that sequence maybe six. more six throws six throws I mean they can't do it any worse than that I mean that's a dreadful rundown by the Phillies not sure why Bettencourt takes off but he does a good job after making the mistake of getting in a rundown and that's about as bad as you can get executing a rundown by Philadelphia and finally Bettencourt gives up after he allows Aoki to get all the way to third base Now well, two outs. Five, two, six, one, two, three. <laughs> Here's Segura now with two away. And a strike. Two runs are in for the Brewers. A walk and two hits. Segura trying to get Braun a swing at Cliff Lee in this inning. Play in the bottom of the fourth. And there's strike two. I don't think I've ever seen a rundown with six throws in the big leagues. We saw when a couple of weeks ago five throws. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was a lot. That is a lot. You want to make one throw if possible, yes. two. Is what you normally see. Six different players handle that baseball and that out. Slow roller back to the mound, and Lee is out of the inning. But the Brewers score twice. So Ricky Weeks singles. Betancourt drives him in with a double. Drives Gomez in. And then an RBI from Figaro. 4 2 Phillies as we head to the fifth.
Sports as we head to the top of the fifth. You can join Fox Sports Wisconsin. Test your basketball skills against the clock at the Bucks Pass Dribble Shoot Challenge at Harley Davidson Museum. It'll be Saturday, July 20th, starting at 9 a.m. And the challenge is open to males and females seven years old and older. For more details, visit FoxSportsWisconsin.com. Click on the upcoming events banner. Michael Young will lead off the Phillies back at the top of their order. Young Mayberry and Rollins against Alfredo Figaro. Four to two Phillies now. Well, now it is imperative for Figaro to carry on in this game. Renicky took the gamble, and once the uh, Brewers had a run on the board, treating Figaro as a regular starting pitcher, rotation member, giving him a chance. They drove it a run. Absolutely. Uh, so it worked. And so now Figaro. But you're right, he's got to get through this inning. You know, Renicky would love to get five, six if possible. Figaro just he's right on the verge. You just get the sense you know he has good breaking stuff his fastball is electric. But he is susceptible to the big inning and that's what's hurt him. So far this season mm -hmm. when he has uh, given up runs. That's what he did against the twins. I mean he, he pitched fairly well but big inning ended up giving him four runs. Little jam shot out to short Segura winds it up throws young out. One gone in the fifth. He certainly has the big velocity. He commands it pretty well. The curveball is good, as you mentioned, but just uh, makes those mistakes that end up costing him runs. So one away for Mayberry, who doubled and scored in the first inning. Took a pitch down in the zone and hit a rocket into right center. Next time up, Figaro jammed him on a pitch up and hit a foul pop up to Betancourt first. That's one thing you like about Figaro. He's got enough velocity to to shake up a hitter. He can come inside. He can go up and in if he needs to. Well, he's got enough to get it by a hitter at about the belt, but he has to be ahead in the count. Mayberry hitting a 285, a confident hitter at the plate. He's really been swinging it well, and his playing time has increased a lot. Charlie Manuel uh, making the decision to go with Mayberry in center field as opposed to Ben Revere. The old adage in baseball the bat plays. And that certainly applies. With Charlie Manuel bouncing ball to second, Figaro gets another one in on the hands of Mayberry, and now two gone here in the fifth. And especially when early in the year the Phillies just couldn't buy runs; they couldn't score at all. They're getting much better lately, but you know, with all the guys that have been hurt for Philadelphia, if you're swinging a bat, you're gonna you know, find your way into that lineup somewhere. Brewers are in that boat as well. Now the Phillies have won five in a row and they've scored five or more runs in the, each of the last five games. Matter of fact they're averaging a, nearly six and a half runs per game during that stretch. Jimmy Rollins with two outs. First ball swinging fouls it away. Thirty nine of his eighty pitches fastballs ninety five or better. And he seems like he does it effortlessly. It doesn't look like he's really expending a lot of energy. Nice fluid delivery. Something that uh, you know a delivery that doesn't seem to be too tough on his arm. He uses his legs very well. They call it easy cheese down in the dugout. <laughs> And it's one and two on Rollins. You know those violent 
deliveries or guys throwing hard, but this is pretty effortless for Alfredo Figaro. Big long stride, uses his legs very well, and a good follow through. Figaro has been a starting pitcher in Japan the last two years. His first ever start came as a member of the Detroit Tigers and it came against Milwaukee. Back in 09 there's a breaking ball just missed. Around the plate. Two and two the count. And down he goes Figaro strikes out Jimmy Rollins. So Alfredo Figaro has six strikeouts the Brewers. Right there for two Phillies as we head to the bottom of the fifth. Afraid of Figaro coming off a three of three down fifth. And let's take a look at our Felco All Star voting update. Shows you the top Brewer vote getters in the National League. All Star game on Fox July 16th. And don't forget, you can vote up to 35 times per email account at Brewers.com. Brian Braun, third among outfielders in the National League. Trying to get uh, Segura and Gomez pushed up a little bit as well. So do your duty. Vote Brewers. Yeah, certainly uh, deserving to go. Three players, if not more. All right, Braun, first ball swinging. A lazy pop up out to shallow center for out number one. Yeah, Braun is one out of three tonight against Cliff Lee. Going to bring up Aramis Ramirez. I was looking at the career of Aramis Ramirez and he's always had the reputation as a slow starter. And it's ironic that this year he got off to a great start. But then he had to go on the disabled list for a month. His numbers are still very good despite missing a month. He's hitting over 300. Three homers, 16 runs batted in. And you see where he was last season. Hitting a 249. It was just about this time last year he started to get it going at the plate a little bit as he drives that one into left field. Back is Brown and he's got it for the out. A yeah, big difference last year to this year. Ramirez not playing every day. You know, two out of three, three out of four perhaps. And Renicky just trying to give him a day off of that knee. Day games after night games he sits. Tough to get it going when you're doing that. You're not playing every day. 
And you know for a guy who has essentially averaged. 25 plus homers and 100 plus runs batted in a year. He's only been an all star twice. Aramis Ramirez. That's nope. because of the slow start. Right. Those terrible starts, the numbers are never quite there right. at the beginning of the season. Never they are at the end. Well, last year, Ramirez had 27 homers and 105 RBIs, led the league in doubles. Hit right at 300, right? I mean, that's a good season. He did. He hit. He hit exactly 300. 171 hits, 570 at bats. Very much an under the radar star in this game, Aramis Ramirez. I mean, you look at his numbers and you rank him up against, you know, third baseman all time. I mean, he's right there. Yep. Yeah, he is uh, chasing Mike Schmidt for most home runs at the third base position by a third baseman, meaning home runs that came while that player was playing third base. Ramirez twice this year was used as a designated hitter. He's seventh on the all time home run list for third baseman. Just behind Adrian Beltre. Lucroy into center field, a base hit. Two out single. And that'll bring the tying run to the plate in the fifth. Uh, speed pitch. Lucroy got it down on the end of the bat, but able to dump it into center. There's that changeup. Leaving it up in the zone, and Lucroy, that's all he needed to get a bat on it, and a two out single. So the Brewers with their seventh hit. Lee has walked two. And here is Gomez now with two away. And Brewers had seven hits off of Cliff Lee in seven and two thirds innings. Back in Philly. He mentioned that uh, the Brewers have had some success against Cliff Lee. Big sweeping curveball in there for a strike. And Lee's uh, earned run average well into the fours against the Brewers. And for a guy like Cliff Lee, who's got ERAs in the twos and threes, I mean, that's pretty good. And Lee is one and one with a 4.79 ERA in six starts career against Milwaukee. Gomez. Right to Mayberry for the out. Side retired. 4 2 Phillies. Five innings in the books. Don't forget you can 
Go to FoxSportsWisconsin.com. Some stories that are up right now. The Brewers draft coverage. Continuing draft coverage. The Packers replace uh, practice with dodgeball. That's, that's interesting. And the uh, state softball live streams. The WIAA. Dodge, dodge streams. Dodgeball? Maybe just, uh, you know, as a means to change it up a little bit. To get to know uh, everybody. It's a basketball team that played dodgeball. The Kentucky Wildcats. And they missed the NCAA tournament last year, so trying to loosen things up, John Calipari. It's a good way to start, uh, you know, practice. You know, drilling guys in the head with a rubber ball. <laughs> Hope they had helmets on. I bet you were a dodgeball star. Oh, no yeah. doubt. All the kids were yeah. running for the exits. The problem it. is, I was real good at you know <laughs> throwing the ball, but you know I had a pretty big target. Right. That is a problem. You know, so. Kind of equaled itself out. That was not one of the first guys picked. How big a boy were you back then, Rock? Were you always the biggest kid in the class like you are here in the booth? Tallest. <laughs> Is that what we're going with? Yeah. Figaro back out there for a sixth inning of work. Pitch count looking good. You know, 86 right now for Alfredo. Well, if it is a relatively routine inning, there won't be any changes. Axford's starting to get loose. The clean shaven John Axford as Figaro goes up the ladder on Howard, and it's two and two. And he's been uh, working Ryan Howard up there all night, and Ryan Howard has not been able to catch up to it. Howard in the left field just flicks one out there. It's deep. Braun gives a chase. Can't come up with it as he slams against the wall. Well, and you see the amazing power of Ryan Howard. Just a flick of the wrist. And sends one deep to the left field corner. And it's a leadoff double for the Phillies. And it didn't get it up in the strike zone enough. And this time Howard able to give it a pretty good ride right down that left field line. It had the corner, but it wasn't up. And Ryan Howard one handed hits that one all the way to the warning track down the left field line. And Ryan Howard, big, big power, very strong. That might have just ticked the end of Braun's glove. He was almost there to make that play. Braun covered a lot of ground. Remember, yeah. you typically play Howard to pull. He goes down the line very well, does Ryan Braun. Covers a lot of ground that way. Double number 16 for Howard to go along with the seven homers. And now Dominic Brown is up. 4 2 Phillies, top of the sixth. That is a free and easy swing going right now, Dominic Brown. Yeah, you talk about a confident hitter. Yeah, big, tall, left handed hitter. He's got a lot of leverage. Quick hands. To the count. You know, your tendency as a pitcher, you look at Brown's statistics, he hasn't walked much. He's actually been walking a lot more in the last couple of weeks than what he did. He didn't walk once in the entire month of May. So your tendency is see if he'll chase a little. And what that has done, at least when the Brewers have faced him, has put them behind in the count against Brown. And that's when he's been at his best. That's when most hitters are at their best. But when he's got a swing groove like he does right now, he's doing big damage. The difference in him right now and a lot of hitters, and he gets his pitch, he's not missing it. A lot of guys work the count pretty well. Two and one, three and one, three and oh, actually hit a home run off of Gallardo in Philly. When he gets it, he hits it hard. Ball and two strikes. Figaro from the stretch, and that one's in the air. Shallow left. Braun eases in. And there is the first out and a big out to get. 
Time to get a checkup on the minor leagues. We send it down to Telly Hughes. All right, B.A., first off, Jim Henderson is slated to make his first appearance of his rehab assignment tonight with Nashville. They're playing the Memphis Redbirds. We'll have an update on that. And Johnny Helwig has won four of his last five starts, compiling a 2.03 ERA with 15 strikeouts over that span. But going back to Jim Henderson, Ron Renicki said before today's game, if everything goes well, there's a good chance you'll see See Jim Henderson back with the Brewers by Sunday. So hopefully everything goes well and we'll see Hendo back here on Sunday. BA. Yeah, that's the first day he's eligible to come back off the DL. And Renneke's going to make the change here. So Figaro gave him all he had. Did a nice job tonight. 93 pitches. Phillies lead 4 2. And we'll take a timeout. Four runs at this point still has a runner at second his responsibility did a nice job bridging the gap coming out of the bullpen in a spot start. Well, Axford is on the pitch Delman Young is coming up and uh, coming off the draft like we are thinking about the 2003 draft Delman Young went number one overall and then Ricky Weeks was number two that year. And look at the careers for those two both in the starting lineup. Tonight, I would say uh, they both have had their moments in the big leagues. Of course, Weeks has been an All Star, and uh, Ricky's uh, maintained a entire career with the Brewers, while Delman Young has bounced around a little bit. And Here's John Axford continues to drop that earned run average, making appearance number 30 here tonight. Picked up a win against the Oakland A's on Tuesday. Pitched a scoreless 10th inning. Brewers winning in the bottom of that inning. Delman Young is two for two with an RBI tonight. Drove in a run in the fourth and he scored in that inning. A little flare right field line slicing foul. I was just looking at uh, some of the names from that 03 draft. Baseball reference is a great source uh, to track particular years in the drafts. I'm trying to think about the biggest name in the group was a Chad Billingsley was in that draft. Salta Lamakia. I'm particularly fond of the 15th overall pick that year. And who was that? That was Brian Anderson. Out of the University of Arizona, the White Sox. He's now, he was drafted as an outfielder. Remember him? I do. He's a pitcher now. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of Brian Anderson's running around. The announcer with the Tampa Bay Rays, Brian Anderson, former uh, left handed pitcher. Nick Markakis was in that draft. Good players, not great players. What was your draft status back in uh, college? Mm. I mean, do you have a still eligible? 
Did you have any uh, nibbles? The guy, no. you know, scouts coming up to you? No, I, I did have a scout one time, Chuck Lamar. You remember him? I do. Former GM of the Tampa Bay Rays. He came up to me in, um, after my senior year in high school, and he goes, "Oh yeah, you got a brother playing pro ball. You got a nice arm. I'm gonna need you to go grow a little bit." <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Chuck. That's a fair ball. Ramirez a long throw in time to get young. For the second out. I thought that uh, you're going to tell the story where uh, scout told you. Kind of built you up and you know you had a sense that you might get drafted but he asked you if you wanted to coach. No 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 that was my second scout story. Oh yeah. He asked me if I wanted to scout. Oh scout OK. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a bummer. Yeah that was uh, that was. Uh, that was a low blow. That was before a game. You were probably getting kind of pumped up, weren't you? That was you? My, my junior year in college. No, my senior year in college. We were just about ready to play Rice mm -hmm. University down in Houston. And I'm just warming up the pitcher, and we're both walking back ready to start the game. And it's an old scout. He's, he's passed away now, but his name was Julian Mock, and he was a legendary old scout, and he was an old, crusty guy. And he, he hollered at me. I walked up to the fence. He goes, Hey, we've been looking at you. And I said, "Oh, wow, that's that's great. This yeah. guy's scouting me. I'm gonna get a chance." Heartbeats getting up there. Goes, yeah, when your uh, when your season's over, we're thinking about sending you to scouting school. <laughs> we think you'd make a great scout. That was mean. Since you can't play a lick, he's looking out for you, though. Yeah. Being honest, I guess, right? I mean, you hey. have to appreciate that. And I had a job waiting for me after. There you go. College. I had two job offers right out of college. I could go be a and look where you've ended a minor up. league broadcaster for twenty five dollars a game, or go be a scout. What was I thinking? <laughs> Pop up to Segura, and that will end the inning. Well, Axford does the job. Brewers down a pair. Famous racing sausages. And the Polis, he's out of control, but he's very fast tonight. Just blowing away the field, demoralizing the rest of the wieners. Look at the hot dog. The hot dog's having a rough year. <laughs> he started last and ended up last. Look at Polis with a little style at the end. He's Cadillacing a little bit. Hot dog. One victory this year. So no night would be complete at Miller Park without a sausage race update. We keep those stats for you. You better believe it. Cliff Lee and the Phillies have a 4-2 lead as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. See the line on Lee tonight. A couple of walks. But he has had some big strikeouts when it has mattered the most. 
Lee had back to back K's in the first with a runner in scoring position to end the inning and then had back to back strikeouts in the second inning with runners at first and third. Brewer scored twice in the fourth and trying to add to it here as Weeks fouls one away. It's quickly 0 and 2. By the way, you can close the book on Figaro as Axford comes in and settles down the six. Phillies unable to score after a leadoff double. Figaro goes five and a third, seven hits, four runs, six strikeouts tonight for Figaro. And did not walk a batter. Yeah, very impressive. Can't say it was a great outing, but I think that you know, Ron Reddick, he has to be satisfied. Got into the sixth inning. Well, the one thing it does right away is set the Brewers up for tomorrow with Gorzolani as Weeks knew it. Called strike three. And down he goes. Lead. That's to his strikeout total. That's number six for him. That four seam fastball right on that inside corner. I think Weeks thought it was going to be a cutter. And it would end up inside. Stayed right on that corner. Much different pitcher tonight is Cliff Lee. I mean, a lot more change ups and curve balls than he threw in Philly. Well, like all aces, as Howard is watching that one into the seats. Like all aces on a night when he doesn't have his A stuff, which he does in tonight, he's pitching very well. Because even his B stuff is better than most. It works quickly, throws strikes, and keeps the ball down, keeps it in the ballpark. He's allowed only five home runs, and he pitches in Philly, and that's a pretty good home run hitting ballpark. Gets ahead in the count and then tries to get you to chase. He's had Betancourt 0 and 2, all three at bats tonight. They tried to bury a changeup to Betancourt in the fourth inning. Betancourt doubled off the fence in left center. See what he gives him here. It's a curveball and it misses down and in. Big sweeping curveball from Lee. You can see uh, Cliff Lee, very deliberate delivery. Well, not much of a wind up, just kind of a steps to the side, and and here he comes. And not 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 a whole lot of trickery with Cliff Lee with respect to his delivery. I mean, he relies on good mechanics and being able to repeat his release point. That's why he's able to throw so many strikes. Same release point for all four of his pitches. One and two. Missed inside. You see a little bit of a sidestep and not a whole lot going on with that delivery. High leg kick and straight over the top. Every time, and it doesn't matter what pitch he's throwing. Now the pitch count at 96 for Lee. So you figure with his spot due up third in the seventh. Could possibly be a pinch hit opportunity for Manuel. Depends on uh, what happens the rest of this inning. And Juan Francisco due to hit next. Breaking ball beat into the ground to short. Rollins for the second out. And it's going to be Juan Francisco announced as the pinch hitter. Brandon Kensler will uh, have the seventh. So put Axford down for two thirds of an inning. And we'll see if Francisco can keep the inning alive. Francisco's only hit as a Brewer came yesterday, and it came against a left handed pitcher. Started his season with the Braves. Overall hitting 233. A little 
too early in the game to be burning one of your right handed batters Maldonado or Bianchi. You got Jeanette and Schaefer the two other left handers on the bench to go along with Francisco so. The two outs nobody on Ron Renicki hoping that Francisco might be able to get a hold of one and knock one out of here. Francisco has not been used as a pinch hitter all that often. He wasn't with the Braves either. He's only had three pinch hit appearances. Wow, look out. Bat flies into the seats. And I think everybody's all right there, but that was scary. That skimmed right across the not, dugout. Not sure how that didn't hit you know, a number of different people. It's like a skip of the stone along a, on a pond. He just kept going up into the seats, but it looks like everybody's okay. Be a nice souvenir. A hardly used Juan Francisco bat. Ball and two strikes. And right down the heart, Lee caught him guessing. And a strikeout, a one, two, three inning. Seven Ks now for Cliff Lee, 4 2 Phillies. Reminding you to please play responsibly. And by Miller Light. It's not just a good time, it's Miller time. Beautiful shot at downtown Milwaukee and just a few miles from there. Miller Park, roof is open tonight on a clear Friday night. Beautiful day here in Milwaukee today. 4 2 Phillies as we go to the seventh, and Rocket will be Brandon Kensler next out of the pen. Yep, Kensler with an ERA just a little bit over four. He's got 25 appearances under his belt, a 2 0 record. And Brandon Kensler last pitched on Tuesday against the Oakland A's, a third of an inning of scoreless baseball, and has not given up a run in 11 of his last 13 appearances. Each club with seven hits. And the Phillies with that three run fourth in the lead. Brewers trying to win tonight to even up the series. It's a four gamer. Don't forget tomorrow is on Fox at 6 p.m. And we're back on Fox Sports Wisconsin Sunday, a day game and the final game of the homestand. Freddie Galvis takes strike one. John Axford. Getting the final two outs in the sixth inning. Another good outing for Axford. Brewers work around the leadoff double in the sixth. Right 
One and two the count. Kenzer a hard thrower. Has a good change up. And a slider has been using the change up a lot this year. And that seems to have made a big difference. In uh, how opponents approach Brandon Kensler and he's actually elevated himself into a setup role with the Brewers. Yep, he's uh, developed to change up to left handed batters. Brewers have uh, thrown out their best fastballs against the Phillies tonight. And I, I think Ron Renicki is rolling out pitchers he would normally use in late leads just to try to keep the Phillies at four runs and give his offense a chance to come back in this one almost treating each inning after a Figaro had to exit last inning as if it was a a hold or a save situation right just trying to uh, yeah you're right I mean the only way you can go back is to keep the Phillies off the board and Milwaukee's done that bullpen continues to be very good that change up we've been talking about yeah, Galvis way out in front man that's an easy for Ramirez for the first out of the seventh inning that's something that Kinsler didn't throw for a while didn't see that until maybe you know his last you know five or six appearances using it in tough situations and it's been a good pitch it's been an equalizer for him against left handed batters. Bouncing ball to Segura and Lee who runs well is out two up and two down. Two quick outs. For. Brandon Kinsler, top of the order now, Michael Young. Back in the leadoff spot tonight, and that one's in there for a strike. Changeup can be such a great pitch. And it really makes your fastball look even better. Kinsler already throws hard. He, he's 93, 94 miles an hour. If he can uh, dial in that changeup, which he has been, and that can be a big pitch for him the rest of the season. And then all of a sudden, the scouting reports get out, and yeah. his fastball becomes even a better weapon. Well, even more importantly for Kinsler, I mean, he's able to throw that pitch for strikes and, and get outs with it. As many arm problems as he's had, I mean, changeup is pretty easy on the arm. It's like a fastball, as opposed to the torque that you need on curveballs and sliders, pitches like that. Changeup. Pretty easy on you. That's why it's such a popular pitch these days. Well, the guy who had one of the greatest changeups ever, Trevor Hoffman, who pitched with the Brewers for a couple seasons, always used to say about the changeup the important thing about that pitch, it has to come from the same release point, same arm speed as your fastball. And as long as you're in that same slot, you don't even have to throw a great change up as Kinsler walks Michael Young with two outs. And that's the key to all of your pitches, not just the fastball, the change up. I mean, if you have to be able to do that with every pitch, or, you know, at this level, somebody's going to pick it up. And if you change your arm action, if you change the speed of your arm and, you know, the slot, I mean, they're going to know. It's just the grip. The grip is the only thing that's different on any one of these pitches. And the position of the fingers on the baseball. Two outs for Mayberry. And there's a strike. Inside. Kinsler's always had a good slider. And that's the the pitch that 
has allowed him to be so effective against right handed batters. So then you throw a change up in there and now he has something. That can control left handed hitters as well. And that one's down and in and all about release point you're saying. Oh yeah, there's two of them. There's a change up and a fastball and they're, they're together. I mean it's the same frame and you can't tell which is which. Until the ball's heading to home plate. And that's what you need. I mean, that's the same delivery, the same arm slot, the same arm action, and just the grip is the only thing that's different. And that affects the way the ball gets to home plate. Well, that was a beautiful shot and a great job by our truck that you can really see where the ball splits. And as a hitter, it's already a third of the way to the plate, maybe maybe half the way to the plate. Yeah. And if everything's the same. Two balls and a strike. And Mayberry takes a strike. So it goes to two and two. I'm not sure what he's looking for there. That was right down the middle. Runner at first, two outs. Kensler trying to get the Brewers to the dugout. Still only down two and a slider taken off the plate. Well, now we'll see what he offers here. Three and two. The payoff runner goes and a swing and a miss. Mayberry strikes out and Kinsler powers a fastball by him to end the inning. Scoreless frame for Kinsler. 4 2 Philly stretch time at Miller Park. To two, Cliff Lee coming back on the mound for the seventh, and lefties have been a tough, tough start for the Brewers. They have just five wins against them, but Ryan Braun is one who has had a lot of success against Cliff Lee, hitting just over 470 with three home runs. And tonight on our AT&T Twitter poll, we were asking Brewers fans, where does Cliff Lee rank among the toughest lefty starters in the league? Kershaw took 48% of the vote, 24% of you said other. Chris Sale, Madison Bumgarner, David Price, Gio Gonzalez, among those that fans tweeted us and. Rock, one thing you said with Cliff Lee is how quickly he works. Did you catch any guys who worked at a similar pace or as quickly as he does? Well, Teddy Higuera, I remember Teddy back in the 80s. I mean, guys that throw confidently and throw a lot of strikes, I mean, they're going to work quickly because when you work slow, more times than not, it's indecision that you know, slows you down out there in the mound, whether you can't get with your catcher 
or you're not sure yourself what you want to throw out there on the mound. I think you made a great point earlier though about Lee and the way to slow him down is yes you can step out ask for time but getting a runner on base changes how he delivers the baseball. Yeah, he, uh, he slows down quite a bit and most do. So when he's in the wind up and he's dialed in and he's retiring you know six seven ten guys in a row that's when he's motoring through a lineup and that's what we saw from Cliff Lee in the postseason the first time around with the Phillies when he went the distance against the Cincinnati Reds a few years back. A lot of different things uh, slow you down when you're out of the stretch and there's men on base. I mean holding runners and you know, stepping off being aware of what's going on around you maybe bunt plays. Those are the types of things that slow you down more times than not out of the stretch. Not so much what pitch you want to throw. Full count to Aoki. And a fastball missed. And a leadoff base runner for the Brewers. Hey fans come out to Miller Park as the Brewers host the Atlanta Braves Friday June 21st through Sunday June 23rd for tickets call 414-902-4000 or visit Brewers.com. Atlanta Braves lead the National League at home runs. They're swinging the bat. Justin Upton in town. And the uh, top vote getter among National League outfielders, Justin Upton. He and Evan Gaddis among league leaders and homers. Now the tying run at the plate. And Segura down the right field line. And that is going to go to the wall. Aoki's got a chance to score here. Young comes up with it. Aoki on his way to the plate. He will score. And it's a triple for Segura. Now he's coming home. Lee's throwing the plate, not in time. Segura scores. Boy, that guy can fly, can he? All right, hit first slide in the home plate, and he got a lot of the shin guards of Eric Kratz. And you certainly hope he's going to be all right. All right, another triple for Gene Segura. This one down the right field line, and he ties it up. A throwing error coming into home plate. That ball didn't score it away by much. Our shining moment of the game. Marshfield Clinic's shining moment of the game. An inside out stroke by Segura. Shoots it down the right field line. And the race is on. You knew Aoki was going to be able to score. Ed Cedar sending him. Segura in at third, standing up. And this ball doesn't get away from Kratz by that much. Segura barely slowed down around third base. Had his head up and he made that decision to go and that's a risky proposition with nobody out. Or Kratz dropped that shin guard right on his right arm, all tied at four on the mad dash of Gene Segura. And we'll give you some more replays of that. It's going to be a triple and an E4. Air goes on Galvis on right. that throw to the plate. That short hop to Eric Kratz and that's what allowed Segura to score the tying run for Milwaukee. Well, once again, the Brewers coming all the way back. They were down three to nothing. All tied at four. As Braun bounces one foul. And Charlie Manuel pushing Cliff Lee to the limit, isn't he? 111 pitches. That's a tough hop for the catcher. I see, Cliff Lee got there, but just couldn't get the handle to make a throw. And Gene Segura very fortunate that he didn't hurt himself. We hope he didn't. As Braun is called out on strikes. So the way he went in head first that arm extended and kind of twisting that shoulder. Yeah, wow. Boy. See that shoulder getting wrenched back and you just hope he's going to be all right. John Tempain home plate umpire right on the call. That was a great look at it. From up above. And give Segura a lot of credit. I mean, he was right on the play. Segura rounding third, watching the throw in, and uh, did not hesitate. And the throw from Lee wasn't all that good. He actually spiked that ball in the ground didn't somehow. Have, didn't have a grip on it. You know, somehow uh, Kratz caught the ball on a bounce.
as Ramirez strikes out. So Lee has come back quickly with back to back strikeouts. Here's the throw from Lee after Galvis has got away. Watch Lee properly backing up the play and doing exactly what he had to do. But you know, see he's running and just couldn't get a grip on it and spiked it into the ground. And, and the Little League home run for Gene Segura. Just keep on trucking. Boy, so fast. Still very risky with nobody out. Yep. You don't want to make the first out at home plate. But he was able to make it. It's a good play if you're safe. Not so good if you get thrown out. Lucroy with two away. Yeah, we're keeping an eye on Segura. He has left the dugout for the clubhouse. And, uh, I'm not sure if he will be able to continue in this game. Big Eric Kratz, the Phillies catcher, dropped. The hammer right on top of him. Crosses four on. And I think this is what has him concerned. I mean, right there. And he may have kicked him a little too. At least on the shoulder. That's a big body to try to squeeze a hand in there. Yeah, look at the home plate umpire. He's right on that call. I mean, he's in perfect position. He's back. He's young. He'll be all right. Now well, that triple by Segura is his eighth that leads the major leagues. Give him an RBI and then he scores on the air. All tied at four. And you can think along with Charlie Manuel last inning. He decides to let Lee hit for himself. He grounds out. Pushing his pitch count over 120. Oh, that's crazy. That's a lot of pitches. Three and two. Luke Croy fouls it away. They don't put the pitch counts uh, in their notes, but he, he was into into like 110 or, or so in his last start against Milwaukee. 122 pitches for Cliff Lee. Wow, that's a lot these days. Another payoff pitch. Luke Croy pops it up. And that will retire the side, but the Brewers score twice. Segura's RBI triple. He scores on an error. Still checking his wounds. We're all even up. There at the bottom of the seventh to even it up against Cliff Lee and the Phillies. A reminder to join Baker Tilly in supporting Brewers Community Foundation. Special Gale Club ticket packages for the July 9th game include food and beverages and a limited edition frame photo set autographed by Gallardo and Lucroy. Call 414 902 game for tickets. So we're all even up now as we go to the eighth inning. 
Segura seems to be all right. Just watching him between innings. No problem. Throwing the ball. But uh, that right shoulder is what he was. Checking on after that slide at home plate. Michael Gonzalez is the next man up for the Brewers out of the bullpen. Yep, the only left handed down there for. The Brewers 33rd appearance already for Michael Gonzalez a 286 earned run average last pitched on Wednesday against the A's. I gave up a run in an inning of work. Got a switch hitter and two lefties coming up. Now Rollins will turn around and hit right handed for the first time tonight. One for three tonight is Jimmy Rollins. Ball high and tight spins him out of there. Ball and two strikes. See the splits for Rollins as a right handed batter hitting 241. Just one home run this year. And a little flare right field right there is Aoki out number one. Not much behind that swing from Rollins. Gonzalez able to get up and in on him and he fought it off in an easy out. You get that first batter out makes your job a lot easier as you get through an inning. There have been two times the, the Phillies have had their leadoff hitter aboard. The second and the sixth. And did not score on either occasion. The sixth inning was a leadoff double by Ryan Howard. He takes a strike. Figaro faced one more bat uh, batter after that, and then John Axford finished the inning. Bullpen has kept the Phillies at four and allowed Milwaukee to come back as it's quickly 0 and 2 on Ryan Howard. Michael Stutes getting ready for the Phillies. Gonzalez throws one to the screen just for the fun of it. Just to keep him awake back there. <laughs> Gonzalez looking in the dugout. I'm not sure who he's looking at, but they didn't throw it. <laughs> Here's a one two and a breaking ball. You knew that was coming. Goes full. Now well, Gonzalez have been dominating left handed hitters over a significant stretch through May, most of May. Struggled in that area. In April, but then uh, gave up three run home run to Brandon Moss on Wednesday, and now he drills Ryan Howard on a 3 2 offering. So Howard is aboard the go ahead run. Gonzalez hits him on a 3 2 pitch. I can let that one get away. It looked like they wanted to. Go outside with the fastball and Gonzalez missed badly. You know, the entire width of the plate and more. Well, what can make him effective can also hurt him, his command. It doesn't give you a comfortable at bat at the plate. You know, at any time. Not even, not even against a right handed bat. I mean, you've got that uh, funky, herky jerky delivery that, that can mess you up at times and. As you mentioned, that's what uh, makes him effective, but that's what makes him inconsistent. Dominic Brown with a runner at first. Sorry, There's a 
There's a strike. Brown doubled and scored in the fourth inning. He's one for three. Has hit three home runs and eight RBIs against the Brewers in five games this year. And in there for strike two. Brewers have used Axford, Kensler, and now Gonzalez. Hoping to take the lead in the bottom of the inning and then give Kara the ball. Milwaukee is glad to be tied, but the last thing they're looking for tonight is extra innings with their starting pitching as it is. Got another spot starter tomorrow in Gorzolani. Brown doesn't bite, and it's three and two now. We got to be careful with him. I mean, he's pretty good against lefties. Now Brown has four homers, four of his National League leading 18 home runs against left handed pitching. 48 at bats. And he lost him. Gonzalez in there primarily to face the two lefties, Howard and Brown, and he walks them both. He got a right hander out there in the Brewers bullpen, and here comes Ron Renicky. Some unusual wildness for Michael Gonzalez, at least the last month or so. So Renicky forced to go to the bullpen. Baden Hop coming in. We'll take a timeout. By Toyota, Eric Kratz hitting a two run home run, part of a three run fourth for the Phillies. Vinnie Betancourt had an RBI double, and the Brewers finally getting on the board against Cliff Lee and the Phillies. They scored twice in the fourth. Figaro had the other RBI, and then Segura drove in a run with a triple in the seventh, and then he scored on the throwing error. And scored the tying run, a little shaken up, remains in the game. And that's where we are. Our Toyota game summary 4 4 game top eight. The Phillies are threatening now with two on and one out. And the new pitcher is Burke Badenhop, who went a couple of innings last night. Yeah, 31st appearance for Badenhop. You got some right handers coming up. 325 earned run average for the Brewers right hander. Three guys left down in the bullpen Thornburg, Hand, and K Rod. Ben Revere, one of the fastest players in the big leagues, pinch running at second base for uh, Ryan Howard. Brown at first. Back to back walks issued by Gonzalez. And a bouncing ball. Delman Young got a chance to turn it. Segura to Weeks. And a high throw. Bencor drops the tag on him. A double play. And how about Burt Badenhop? One pitch, two outs. Inning over.
And we're still tied at four. The pitcher's best friend. Delivery of the game comes from Gene Segura, a triple in the seventh inning, and Davey, it's off to the races. He takes advantage of an error to go home. Boy, it certainly does. I think he's leading the league in triples, but boy, what a heads-up play. Good instinct. This is why this kid is so exciting. He has outstanding instincts. He made that decision on his own and saw that he could get there once the ball kicked away. And one quick trip around the bases. That ends up tying the game at 4-4. That's where we sit right now going to the bottom of the eighth inning. Davey and I will break down this ball game. Brewers line post game on the way. Get inside the clubhouse. Our instructional as well. Hopefully a fantastic finish by the Brew crew here. Not done yet. 4-4 Brewers and Phillies. Brian. All right, Craig and Davey, thanks. There's Lance Nix. He'll take over at first base. Remember, Ryan Howard was pinch run for. Ben Revere remains in the game. He'll play center field. And that moves Mayberry over to right. And the Phillies have a new pitcher. Cliff Lee is out. As Michael Stutes is on the pitch. 4-4 game, bottom eight. In his seventh appearance, Stutes has been up three different times this year. He called from Triple A on May 31st. He's got a big arm. He's averaging over 11 strikeouts per nine innings down in the minor leagues. Carlos Gomez leads off. He'll be followed by Weeks and then Betancourt. At the plate presented by Wendy's. For Gomez tonight, a triple a walk. Flew out to center field his last time up. So Cliff Lee goes seven innings, eight hits, four runs. Three of those were earned. Three walks, nine strikeouts for Cliff Lee. They have three walks. Two of them came around to score. Will not factor in the decision tonight. So Cliff Lee in his last two starts, which both came against the Brewers, combining for 20 strikeouts. Two balls and a strike on Gomez. The Brewers continue to be able to figure out ways to score runs on Cliff Lee. I mean, four runs on, you know, three of them earned. Coming in and earned run average at about 4.8. That's going to go up. Two and two to Gomez. And a bouncing ball to third. Tough hop. Eats him up. Gomez will reach. 
You could see Young trying to get to the big hop, but could not. And that short hop just ate his lunch. Yeah, he just can't back up with Gomez running down the line. I mean, he'd like to be able to back up, maybe take a better hop, but knowing that he has to be quick, not able to handle it. I mean, that's what speed does. I mean, it forces errors by the infield. Michael Young knows he has to be quick to get rid of it and just couldn't find the handle. Well, now you look for Gomez to try to steal the base. The scheduled hitter Ricky Weeks will be lifted for a pinch hitter. A scooter Jeanette will bat. He might be dropping down a bunt. Now Jeanette can run. He's a good bunter as well. Doors have a very good base stealer at first, and Stoots checks on him. Are you surprised Charlie Manuel lifted Ryan Howard from the game? I am in a tie game. You bet you. He did that in Philly. Had a big lead. He took him out of the game for defense and nearly cost him a game. Yeah, his spot came up in a big spot as Jeanette shows bunt, takes a ball. You wonder why you uh, use a pinch hitter to drop down a bunt. Ricky has not bunted much in his career and has not done it all that well. Well, taking a shot, he puts a speedy Ben Revere out there to score on a base hit and first pitch. Delman Young rolls into a double play. But how big was that for Baden Hop? Not just for what it does today, but he threw two innings yesterday. You wonder how much in the tank he had. And I'm sure Renicky was concerned about a long at bat or a lot of pitches coming off two innings yesterday. All he needed was one to get two outs. There goes Gomez. And Jeanette bunts right through it. He did that on purpose. Easy stolen base for Gomez. That's a pretty smart move by Scooter Jeanette. I mean, he didn't want to bunt it because Gomez had it stolen. And what that does, it really disrupts the timing of the catcher when he waved the bat out there. Look at Jeanette. I mean, he does that on purpose. Misses it on purpose to allow the stolen base. Now you drop down a bunt and you get Gomez to third base. Gomez with number 12. And there is the go ahead run at second base as Jeanette bunts this one in the air and Young will make the catch. Ouch. And that's the last thing he wanted to do. Trying to advance Gomez to third, he pops up the bunt for the first out. And you got to be able to drop down these bunts when you're down near the bottom of the batting order. He just poke, he pokes at it and an easy out. Well, it would have been nice to be able to get Gomez to third base. Now it's going to take a base hit. Assuming that Gomez doesn't try and steal third. Well, Bencore steps up to the plate with Gomez aboard, just like he did on Tuesday. When he delivered that 10th inning walk off hit against the Athletics. Yeah, Philly's thinking Gomez might take off. Uh, Galvis uh, shaded up the middle, going to keep Gomez close. That opens up a huge hole between first and second. And Bencore fouls it back. Well, we take you back to Tuesday with Gomez at first. Nishek on the mound. This was in the 10th inning. Bettencourt delivered the hit. Gomez never slowed down and scored the winning run. And Uni B with the third walk off of the season for the Brewers. Joining Blake Lally and Jonathan Lucroy in that category. Trying to deliver a big hit here. Long look for Stutes and Bettencourt asked for it as granted timeout. Yeah, a little bit too long. Freezes the hitter that way. Uni had a double in an RBI off Lee back in the fourth. Ball and a strike. Man, Stutes with big strikeout totals down in the minor leagues, but he doesn't throw that hard. I mean, 91, 92, sinks it. Good slider, throws strikes. 
That's a lot of strikeouts, almost 12 for nine innings. There's Logan Schaefer on deck, ready to hit for the pitcher. Now, Rock, you talked earlier in the ballgame about the Brewers being a position to, to put the pressure on the defense. And when you're down big in games, you don't really have that opportunity. But this is what you're talking about. Yeah. Stutz uh, spending a lot of time paying attention to Gomez. And that could turn into a mistake for Betancourt at the plate. Yep, and when you're even or you're you're close, you have the potential stolen base. You know, you have Gallus shaded up the middle, open up big holes over there in the infield. And you know, when you're down by a lot of runs, I mean teams don't care if you run. And they're not going to set their defense to keep you from running. Brewers were behind four nothing after the top of the fourth. All tied at four as we play in the eighth and the one two down in the dirt. Nice block by Kratz. Well, that was a tough pitch to stay in front of. That's a big play right there for the Phillies. And he, he does it about as well as anybody. I was talking about technique. Takes the glove completely out of the equation. Watch where the glove is. Keeps it down. Just trying to catch that ball with his chest. That's what you want to do. You want to keep that glove down. Keeps Gomez at second base. Two and two to Betancourt. And Uni bounces one to short. Rollins will go to first for out number two. Gomez ends up at third base. And now two gone. And it's going to be up to the pinch hitter, Logan Schaefer. K Rod open for a run and a save opportunity. Gorzolani gets the ball tomorrow. A spot start for Gorzolani. It's going to be another bullpen by committee day for the Brewers. In our Miller Light, what's on tap? Gorzolani against Kyle Kendrick, who's off to a very good start this season with six wins and an ERA in the low threes. Another guy with a pretty good breaking pitch, control pitcher. Now keep in mind if you're Carlos Gomez you're at third base you've got two outs. And you've already seen that big curveball from Stutes. But it doesn't appear that. Charlie Manuel is going to allow him to face Logan Schaefer. And Manuel is going to go for the left hander in the bullpen. So a pitching change at Miller Park. We'll take a break set up the new hurler when we come back. Majority of the Brewers may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent of the Brewers Baseball Club. Now don't forget our post-game instructional coming your way. Something uh, that was shot in spring training with Teddy Higuera and Juan Nieves with Bill Schroeder. And that's coming up on Brewers Live post game. Yep, talking about uh, the delivery, the pitching delivery. And Juan Nieves now the pitching coach for the Boston Red Sox. 
Well, managers making their moves here, Rock. You got the left-hander Jeremy Horst in, and Jeff Bianchi will pinch hit for Logan Schaefer. Yeah, Horst has been pretty good lately. Do you see that 4.7 earned run average? Got seven strikeouts over his last three and a third innings, and Ron Renegade going to go with Bianchi. So they pull back Logan Schaefer. His night's over. Used as a decoy tonight. Brewers trying to get a run home in the eighth. Turn it over to K Rod for a save opportunity in the ninth. There was that one guy left on the bench. That's Maldonado. That's it. Covered is bare, except for the catcher. Gomez with great speed at third. Horse delivers and Bianchi fouls it back. One and two the count now. Gomez reached on an error to start this inning. An error by Young at third. Stole second. Went to third on a ground out. Go ahead and run 90 feet away as Bianchi pops it up. And this is going to retire the side. Brewers strand another runner at third. Still tied at four as we go to the ninth. inning and going to be a final at bat win for someone tonight Gomez stranded at third in the eighth inning Scooter Jeanette will stay in to play second and Francisco Rodriguez on the pitch and last pitch on Tuesday against the A's pitched a scoreless inning and three for three and save opportunities Ron Redke hoping for a zero in the top of the ninth and then a run in the bottom uh, to get a nice win tonight. It would be another come from behind win for Milwaukee. Tenth appearance for K Rod. Has been unscored upon in eight of his nine appearances this year. Brewers fell behind 4 0 to Cliff Lee and the Phillies. And able to come back to tie it. Two in the fourth, two in the seventh. Here we are in the ninth with Eric Kratz leading off. Kratz takes a ball from K Rod. Kratz had a big hit in this game back in the fourth. He doubled in two runs and then he scored the fourth run. That was all part of a three run fourth inning, giving the Phillies that 4 0 lead at the time. He's staring at a 4 0 deficit against Cliff Lee and I beg your pardon, hit a home run, a two run homer in the fourth. But uh, staring at a 4 0 lead against Cliff Lee, and it's not looking pretty at that point. Wait. 
3 and 0 oh to Kretz. Phillies as a as a group aggressive 3 and 0 oh, they'll swing. Not this time right down the middle. 3 and 1. I've heard Charlie Manuel say it many times that 3 0 pitch is oftentimes the best pitch you'll see in an at bat. <laughs> yeah, some guys just don't like to swing 3 you know Ryan Braun one of them ordinarily. Some guys feel as though they're going to give away in at bat maybe be a little bit too aggressive hate to make an out on the 3 0 count. A strike burned off the edge. And it goes to three and two on Kratz. Remember Dal Evans? Red Sox? Yep, for sure. Tigers. That guy, uh, a terrific 3 0 hitter. I should say Dewey Evans. Oh, Dewey Evans. Yeah. That last inning for the Brewers looked promising. Had a runner at second with nobody out. Jeanette tried to bunt Gomez to third. Probably was Jeanette bunting on his own, I would imagine. Now his job was to get him over to third base, however way he could. Kratz leans out over one. Slow roller Segura throw the first in time. Good comeback for K Rod. He fell behind 3 0. And he comes back to get the big slugger. Well, speed pitch down in the strike zone, and Kratz uh, rolled one to Segura on ball four. He's been throwing strikes since he's come up. And that's always the key for K Rod throwing the ball over the plate, getting ahead in the count, but able to get an out down 3 0. It was Galvis a threat to bunt and Ramirez in on the grass at third base. Galvis has had a rough night tonight. 0 for 3, two strikeouts and a foul pop. Switch hitting utility infielder getting the start at second base tonight. Pulls that one. Foul. Just missed the bag. And that was close. K Rod trying to get through this inning without having to deal with the top of the order and then hoping the Brewers end the game without having to deal with the top of the order. And the Brewers have the top of their order coming up in the bottom of this inning. Galvis up with one away. You got Lance Nix on deck. Came in on the double switch last inning. All tied at four. Brewers have out hit the Phillies 8-7. Two errors committed by the Phillies. Big bender in there for strike two. Gerard, just 31 years of age, burst onto the scene back in 2002. He was throwing hard back then in the upper 90s. His fastball tops out about 91, 92 these days. And the 2 2 is swung on, ripped to right. Aoki is there. And out number two. Yeah, hit that one pretty well, right on the nose, but Aoki able to make an easy catch. But the key is, you know, K Rod keeping the baseball down, that change up, slider down the strike zone. That one down on the end just enough. Two up, two down. And 
And it'll be Lance Nix. Nix, a former Brewer. Acquired in a trade with the Rangers. He was part of that Carlos Lee deal. Turned himself into a good bat off the bench. He's had a nice career in the big leagues in that role. His brother Jason Nix plays for the Yankees. You're not the greatest of defenders, but uh, you make a mistake, he can knock one out of here, and that's what you have to be aware of here in this situation. No mistakes upstairs. Knicks came to the Brewers with Francisco Cordero and Kevin Mensch for Carlos Lee and Nelson Cruz in 2006. Curveball strike. Good one. Two and two now. Trying to make it a one, two, three inning. And he got him. Living up to his nickname. K Rod puts a K on Knicks. And the Phillies go in order. And now the top of the order coming up for the Brewers. We head to the bottom of the ninth, still tied at four. Powerball home run count, and we take you back to Jonathan Lucroy's big series in Philadelphia. That's six home runs for the season now, Lucroy. Half of those came in the Philadelphia series in two games in Philadelphia. Had two in one night last Friday, including a five hit game. The Brewers are in a home run drought right now. They could use one here. That would end it as we head to the bottom of the ninth. Top of the order coming up. Nori Aoki to lead off. And the left hander Jeremy Horst is back on the mound to start this ninth inning. And it looks like he's going to stay in the game even when the right handers come up because nobody getting loose in that Philly bullpen. That's a surprise. Aoki tonight has two hits. He's walked. And he's reached on a fielder's choice. He walked in the seventh and then scored on the Segura triple. And then Segura scored on the throw to the plate that got away. And that tied the game at four in the seventh inning. And that's where we are here in the ninth. Segura do next. All of that was against Cliff Lee. One year ago today, a solo home run to win the game. As he bounces one to Knicks for the first out.
And here comes Segura. Well, Segura, one for four tonight, batting average of 336. He started the day fourth in the league in hitting. By the way, that triple for Segura was his eighth to go along with eight home runs. If you're wondering what the single season record is for the Brewers, it is Paul Molitor with 16. Segura is halfway there. Yeah. Matter of fact, Molitor has the top two single season numbers for triples 16 and 13, and then Yount twice. The three in the four spot occupied. Robin Yount helped design this ballpark and he had the triple in mind. Yeah, particularly those angles in center field. Yeah, Segura so fast and uses right field so well. And those are the, the triple angled walls. Triple alley out there and left center and right center. One ball, two strikes on Segura. Got jam, slow roller, tough play. Rollins bare hands, throws, not in time. Segura reaches on an infield hit. How do you know that was going to be a tough play for Rollins? A lot of hitters, you know, when they get jammed, it takes them a while to get out of the box. I mean, you have that big swing, you get the ball in on you, and you don't get a very good jump out of the batter's box, but uh, Segura not one of them, and he gets full speed very quickly. Good play by Rollins, but just not enough on the throw to be able to get him. The league leader in infield hits. And the winning run is aboard here on the ninth. There was about a couple of infield hits tonight. He and Aoki. Ryan Braun stepping in. Game on the line. 4-4, ninth inning. Well, Braun had a big cut. And be careful of trying to run here. Segura didn't have a very good jump into this stolen base in the first inning. Picked up a quick curve curveball and Kratz has a pretty good throwing arm back behind home plate. See Braun's numbers against left-handed pitchers this year, 361. Three of his nine home runs and about a third of the at bats. 0 oh and 1 to Braun. And he fouls it back. No balls, two strikes. Braun trying to send him home happy tonight. He's done some of his best work in his career with two strikes late in games. And he lays off a fastball. One and two the count. Braun playing with an injured right thumb. Really is giving him some problems, but uh, he's trying to fight through it. Back to the heat. One and two, and Braun fouls it away. He was late. That's the pitch right there. And that thumb is not quick enough on the inner half of the plate. Able to foul it off, but you get it in there, and you got that top hand having a tough time, and tough to get the foul on it. The Phillies have their outfield deep, playing no doubles. Segura with great speed at first. And Horse coming back to the fastball. One and two the count. And Braun rips one back up the middle. Base hit. Segura on his way to third. And there is the winning run 90 feet away as Ryan Braun delivers with a two strike hit. First and third with one out. Uh, nice battle by Ryan Braun. Horse finally left the one out over the plate. Kind of mixed it up pretty well on Brawny. Yeah, first two pitches, Braun able to foul off. 
First a fastball, pretty good hitter's pitch. Got a piece out, the slider fouled it back, and then Ryan took a pretty close one on the outside corner. Another pitch in on him, and now Horse is going to leave one up out over the plate, and Braun hammers it into center field, and because Revere is playing so deep, Segura is able to get into third base easily. A lot of ways to score here. Great speed won't take much to get him home. Now the Phillies outfielders come extremely shallow. Aramis Ramirez a chance to win it and a big swing on the first pitch. One of the best run producers the Brewers had last year Ramirez. Has struggled this season against lefties, hitting just 233. And the Phillies playing for the double play because Ramirez isn't running all that well. Here's the 0-1. And Ramirez lines one down. That's a base hit. And in the score, Segura, the Brewers win. Aramis Ramirez with a game winner. The Brewers walk off for the second time on this homestand. And this time it's Aramis Ramirez delivering in the clutch and a 5 4 Brewer win. Now the two big guys, Ryan Braun and Aramis Ramirez, coming up big. And once again, the speed of Gene Segura has provided some fireworks tonight. The infield hit. He was finally able to cash in with a man in scoring position tonight. Curveball down and in, and Ramirez able to drop the head on it. And end this one here at Miller Park in the bottom of the ninth. Brewers end up two for 14 with runners in scoring position. Well, that's a big one. Well, and it, in so many ways, you think about how desperate the pitching situation is. The Brewers could ill afford to go to extra innings, and Aramis Ramirez makes sure that doesn't happen. He wins it, and he is standing by with Telly. Thanks so much, B.A. Aramis, your first hit, you made it count. What was the approach at that at bat? Uh, actually, I was trying to hit the ball to right field. And, you know, just try to stay inside the ball, and, uh, you know, he threw me a slider, and I got the head out. With this win, this is the second walk-off win, this homestand. What does it say about this team's resilience, being able to come back four down against Cliff Lee? Well, we never gave up. I mean, uh, we know we can score runs. Uh, we haven't played it the way we like to until this point, but, you know, we never gave up. We're going to show up every day and play hard. And with this team, obviously, you guys are trying to build some momentum to finish off this homestand before a long road trip. A game like this, how can you guys build off of this? Uh, we can. We just got to show up tomorrow. We got another uh, tough starting pitch here uh, on uh, Kendrick. Uh, we got to show up and play hard. I mean, you never know what's going to happen on the diamond. Congratulations on the game winner. Thank you. All right, that's Aramis Ramirez. One hit, but Craig, he made it count. As to send it up to you to, for the start of Brewers Live. All right, Telly, a huge hit, a huge walk off. Both wins on the homestand in dramatic fashion for the Milwaukee Brewers. We'll look at it all tonight. Get inside the clubhouse. Our instructional on the way. Brewers, a major league comeback victory.